to have a prenuptial agreement, being who you are, the best thing to do is just put your video game consoles in it. Who cares about money, cars, houses, and stuff like that? Just put your PS4 in it. Uh, as a disclaimer, you can put your Xbox One in it and put your con your old consoles in it. That's about it. Hey, guys, we're live. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Not too nerdy. What is up, Beastly Gamer? Oh, man, making it happen, Kevin. What's going on, Robbie? Welcome back, brother. Hey, thanks. Glad to be back on the show. Things have been good. How yeah, about you? Man. Oh, man, making it happen, Captain, you know, enjoying it, taking the helm of this week's show uh, in, in place well, of my good friend, Briar Rabbit, you know. What you guys been doing this week? Robbie, how you been, man? You been playing games this week? Yeah, I've been playing a uh, little Call of Duty Ghosts on PS4, improving my skills on that, and then I've been playing a little Stick It to the Man, too, that's been free, and it's a fun game, so I've been playing that, and that's been about it for me. I've been playing a lot of Call of Duty with friends and stuff like that, so it's been good. Yeah, I, uh, I I briefly looked at Stick It to the Man just just for a few minutes. Give me your impressions on that game. Uh, what do you think about it? I think it's unlike anything I've really ever played before. Like, it's so different. I don't even know how to explain it. It's sort of like a platformer, and, like, basically what happens is you're this guy. I don't remember what his name is. I think his name's Ray, and he has this free construction accident, and what happens is he's like this pur purple spaghetti arm sticking out of his head so he can read people's minds. And basically you go throughout the game reading minds and stuff like that and collecting little clues to get past to the next area. It's a really interesting concept, and I think it works pretty good, and it's a lot of fun. So I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Yeah, I, I uh, saw you get to reach out of your mind and, and kind of uh, manipulate... Yeah, manipulate objects throughout the game. It's really unique. Uh, and just keep me posted on whether or not that game is worth me playing through. Not too nerdy, ENT, in 2 in What's going on, brother? What, what is up, man? It's kind of weird to see this uh, show on my channel for once. That's kind of kind of crazy, kind of unique. But, uh, you know, I, I know now I know what it's like for Brian Rabbit to have the power behind his hands over here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, it's been a good week for me. Um I did. Uh, I had a, a special decal that I finally got, which I you guys didn't see the unboxing for it, which yeah, is pretty cool. Um, the skinny, I, I like a lot. I mean, something's cheap. I got for free. It, they did a great job with that. Also, I did the Walking Dead, all the bad choices. So, if you guys didn't get a chance to see that, definitely go check that out. It's pretty cool. And that's uh, that's episode three, right? Episode three, Season man. Season two, episode three. I have not played it yet. Uh, I saw a lot of information on YouTube about it. I'm, I'm guessing this is when things really start getting interesting. This was, I have to say, the darkest episode yet. Like, this was, it was, it was very dark. The only thing I didn't like was that I didn't get to control most of the action. This was, like, mostly seeing it. But it was so good that you didn't mind if you were playing it or not at the moment. It just was so much going on. It was so gory. It reminded me a lot like the TV show. This was like, it, it reminded me a lot like the TV show. Like last season TV show, it looked like it was like almost the same exact way. So it was pretty cool. Slash yeah. the comic books too. Because last year, like towards the end of the season, the TV show related really closely to the comic books. And this does as well. So it was, it was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, I, I got to say, I think the comics have always been better than the show. But, but the fact that the game is actually stepping up to the bar... Telltale Games, man, they're a studio that has a lot of ability. It's amazing to see where they came from. I came back in the house about an hour and a half ago to Kate playing, um, uh, what is it, uh, the, the time travel, Back to the Future. Yeah. And I was watching it, and, you know, she was enjoying it and going through her story, but it was hard to believe it was the same company behind the Walking Dead games. There's actually a poll going on right now, Not Too Nerdy on uh, IGN about whether or not Clementine is the best video game character of all time. Do you think that's even possible? I Best female, again, pretty darn close. Like And, like, you have to keep in mind, there's some competition for best female character. You got, like... Ellie? Yeah, well, yes. I mean... <laughs> I was thinking that, too. I would say you go back in time to a little game called Metroid... You have a more powerful female than that, you know what I mean? Touché, touché. So that's why, like, but she is, she's like no mercy anymore, especially the way I play with the dark, you know, when you have, like, the bad choices and stuff like that, she has no mercy. She doesn't hesitate. She kills if she has to kill. And it reminds me a lot like, oh, man, what was her name from the TV show? Um, it, someone from last season, the TV show, like, you see how 
sometimes these kids, like in this you know dark world and stuff, they grow up with this stuff and they start to live it. Like they they no longer has those feelings that they're scaring them, where they know what they have to do to survive. And it's pretty intense to see that. You're talking about the chick in the show with the short hair. Yeah, I, I didn't want to say cause just in case people didn't catch up yet. I'm like, I don't want to be a spoiler, even though yeah. we're pretty much a year late, but still, like. <laughs> so she does what she has to do. Okay. Yeah, she does what she has to do. Now, uh, when you're playing uh, The Walking Dead with bad choices, does that really affect the game? I mean, is it. Now, now when we take into account the, the choice paradigm in video games, instantly a person will have the idea of, like, infamous, which I did play today. I played infamous, um, mm. the. the Second Son, because my buddy came over and wanted to play it, and I told him that you, you do have the option to be good or bad, but very little has actually changed throughout the game. Do you feel more of a, a degree of separation, a pass, when you go good versus bad in The Walking Dead? Well, yes. Yes, and sometimes it's no, but majority of times it's a yes. Like, for example, there's one quick episode. Is, it wasn't part of season one. It was, it's called 400 Days. Now, 400 Days, you had a bunch of new characters, and each of them had their own story. And at the end of 400 Days, like, there was this lady that came along that offered to take them to a camp or whatever, right? And it depends on what you did throughout the whole story that they'll be on your side, they won't be on your side. I was able to do the bad choices and got a lot of them to come back with me to go with that lady. It turns out in this past episode, you meet those characters again, but they're not on the good side. They're on the bad side because they're sort of... You know, not to spoil anything, but you meet them again. And wow. and because of what I did, because what I did in the beginning, I was able to get almost all of them back. You got to see them there. So if I didn't bring them back, they wouldn't have been in that position. See yeah. that? So it's pretty it's pretty intense. <laughs> okay, now in the last episode, season uh, two, episode two, the girl with the blonde hair who was from 400 Days, she was introduced and she was a part of Carver's team. Uh, okay. You're talking about Bonnie. Bonnie, yeah. Bonnie, yes. Who, who was in love during 400 days with the guy who was cheating on his wife. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, actually, the decisions you made in 400 days changed the paradigm of those characters, what you're it saying? It changed for some of them. Which one goes back, which one doesn't, which one will actually be there. So there's some people that didn't have people there. And that was the thing. Like, it, you'll see, like, all the people there are 400 days – in there, and it took me a while to figure it out. I didn't realize so I'm like, oh my gosh, like I know these people already. Like, what are they doing here? Why are they on the bad side? Wow, because you always make bad choices. Exactly, because I did the, you know, <laughs> that is my fault. I meant. Wow, that sounds really fun, man. I might have to go ahead and pick it up today. I um have been playing. I talked to you guys two weeks ago about a game called Dead Block. Do you remember? Yes, you said that. Uh, yeah, you showed us, like, oh, I looked up the images for that. It's pretty cool. We actually did, uh, Kate and I last night did Beauty and the Beast on it, and we played for about 25 minutes. That game is so addicting, not too nerdy. Robbie, if you get a chance, the game is $7 on PSN. The map pack is only 3 so you're spending a cool $10 for it. And we got the map pack last night because we already had the game. But um, it's just so addicting getting into that game. It's like the zombies mode from Call of Duty, but... It doesn't have that sense of dread that you get in Call of Duty. Zombies in Call of Duty. You got me right there. I'll, I'll probably be getting it then. I yeah, really it's, love Call of Duty zombies. But it, it has so much depth to the actual gameplay that Call of Duty does. In Call of Duty, you run from room to room. You 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 know block up windows. You up, update your guns. And you kill, and then you get waves, and then you get you know a boss every now and then. This is so That's much different simple. because of the, uh, the type of weapons you get. You don't just block up doorways. Is you actually get things to put on the doorways. Mm -hmm. And there are three different characters. The character I, I, I choose, he normally gets ice. He's a construction worker. And he has something that he can put on the doors. As soon as a zombie walks through, they turn into ice. He just run over to him and hit him. They shatter into a, a clump of ice. And, you know, she gets bombs. And it was just really fun. So I've been playing a lot of that. I've been playing some Call of Duty, of course. I play that every week. Um, got into some, uh, like I said, Infamous Second Son. I played some KOTOR. Yesterday, Knights of the Old Republic for my Xbox. Uh, Kate never had a chance to play that game. And so I uh, wanted to get into it, show her what made the game so great on the Xbox. And, and she really got a chance to see how Bioware really started. Because Bioware, when you look at them now, you think about Mass Effect, Ma uh, you, you know, Shepard, you think of all these 
amazing cinematics, the way the story is told, the paradigm of how you can ask questions and answer them, and then seeing Knights of the Old Republic on Xbox, you see the ver the inception of that, the genesis of that idea, and the way it worked was so well, and she, her eyes are just, you know, watching me play going crazy, but I had a really good uh, week playing games, also had my anniversary on Saturday. Uh, Wait, 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 wait. Congratulations, congratulations. There we go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even I can make a relationship work. <laughs> um, so easy a caveman can do it. No, um That's brisk, baby. It's been fun. That's my brisk. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's better than Pornhub. Uh, <laughs> so, keeping keep relationships strong. Five years at a time, Pornhub. No, uh, we went and... Uh, Saw Godzilla. We went to Red Lobster. Uh, we went and hung out. We went and did some laser tag and some miniature golf. That's the kind of nice. stuff that that's the kind of stuff we do, you know, to have fun. And then she had some wine. We came home and uh, we played some Call of Duty and, and and hung out. Got rid of all the kids. I'll tell you this now, guys. If you have children like I do, I got four. And then when they all leave the house, you get paranoid. You're like, I don't hear anything. No screaming, yelling, fighting, crying. Nothing? What is this? Wait, <laughs> yeah, quick, it was... Quick question, though. Who won the miniature golf? I'm just saying. I, I want to know. Was the Beastly Gamer not really the Beastly Gamer? I'm just saying. I, I have a feeling <laughs> that she won. Hey, I, man. I have a feeling that she won. Just that Listen, good feeling. The Beauty and the Beast segment hasn't even aired yet. How are you going to call me out on this? And I'm, I'm just saying. I have a feeling that she won. I, I just say though that was a beastly gamer not so beastly. Get ready to be proven wrong, <laughs> not too dirty. Fifth, fifth. I believe he's the fifth. One, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Yeah, she she won. She won. They had, they had twenty holes out there, but she's always been real good at uh, miniature golf. She said because she's a miniature person, she's so low to the ground she can just look straight across, <laughs> knock it right in. But uh, yeah, she's 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 always been, she's been she's been the the golfer of the family, and uh, she she won. She beats me at darts too. We got an uh, authentic Budweiser dart board. She she's a very athletic young lady, and she likes playing sports and playing video games. But we had a great time, and I think the highlight of the day was go besides spending my five year anniversary with my wife, of course, was just <laughs> seeing. Good save. Good save. <laughs> was uh, seeing the Godzilla movie, man. Oh, let me tell you this, man. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna spoil everything. Uh, I'll cut it off before you get. I'm taking your out. I don't even want to hear anything besides the name. That's I, it. I, I forgot. He, he does. He does wield the power this week, guys. Okay, so, the back end. The back end. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. On, on that note, uh, I'll just say that the movie was phenomenal. Um, it was very believable. Uh, the way that it was presented, it doesn't come across as you know, a fantasy or uh, unrealistic rendition of a possible outcome if something like this were to actually happen. And it was a great time. And the fight scenes were awesome. So uh, if you guys got a couple extra bucks and a woman you've been with for five years, go see Godzilla in theaters now. Unfortunately, I'm single, so. Well, you got to see Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> So that <laughs> you stay on camera right now. Picking on me much? Oh man! <laughs> this is a hit me. That movie wasn't that good. It's <laughs> no, it wasn't. I heard it was pretty underwhelming. Yeah, I have yet to see it, but I mean, uh, not good. the the movie itself was, was structured okay, I think Spider Man, but um, it's it's not what a person would want after seeing something like Captain America or the Avengers even. You want action from from your actual centerpiece of the movie. You want to see what this person with these fantastic powers is able to do other than swing through the city. And it just, for me, wasn't enough of that. And, uh, you know, the action was all, it was very brief and it, toward the end of the movie. And But I think they were just setting up for the Sinister Six. So that's what I think. But that was my week, guys. All also, right. for the guys who don't know, which you guys are probably wondering, where, where the hell is, is the rabbit? Silly rabbit. Briar Rabbit. <laughs> Briar Rabbit is uh, off in Arizona, guys. Uh, he just married Jan on Saturday, the 16th, on my anniversary. So, yes, I take all credit for that. Uh, yes, but 
uh, they're out having a ball, having a great time. And uh, like I said on a video that I did, actually, on behalf of myself and on behalf of the other guys, yeah. <laughs> we're still here. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, and uh, we can't wait to see you guys when you come back. We hope you're having a ball. Relax. Enjoy your vacation. It's fun, you guys. Yeah. And I just want to say, Briar Rabbit, um, uh, just want to let you know that I know this is a hard time when your manhood is passed on and it's no longer yours anymore. But what Americans like to call it, it's called marriage. I just wish you the best marriage possible. And hopefully one day you can learn to share your own manhood. With your wife. Kind words, not too dirty. That's <laughs> wonderful. There's my golf um, clock for you. My that's for you, man. That, that's for you. I can just, I can see Briar Rabbit in the ether right now saying, uh, thanks. <laughs> I think. Slow clap. Well done. Well played. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, all right, I had a question for you, Beastly Gamer. Now, we're going to go around real quick. You know, Robbie will be next, but real quick for you. Now, the Xbox One, we're going to go to that topic first. The Xbox One is $399. The Xbox One also announced changes to the paywall. And also, what are your thoughts? Will, will this add 10% power to the Xbox One? So it's all to you. So you can go in whatever order you want to go, but that's all directed to you. Spotlight on you. Go. <laughs> No, uh, no. The reason I don't think that this will actually have uh, the effect that Microsoft is hoping, first of all, I'm questioning whether or not this is a smart idea in the first place, because you got a company that reminds me a lot of Barack Obama. Everything that they campaigned on at E3 last year was a lie. <laughs> everything they they doubled back on. Everything. Yeah, I mean, everything that they said they were going to do. Listen, people, this is the future. Relax. We're going to take you to the future of gaming. And then six months later, uh, just forget all that, guys. We're going to do what Sony's doing. This shit ain't working. Um, and pretty much that's what they said. Um, releasing a $400 Xbox One is a good idea uh, because a next-gen console has to be competitive with its competitors. But removing the one thing that made it unique amongst, I mean, as far as a standout compared to the PS4 was the Kinect. The, the Kinect sensor did have better functionality than the PlayStation Eye. It, it does have uh, better features than the PlayStation uh, camera. And now that that's removed, I feel like the, the, the Xbox One is like a glorified 360 kind of, and they don't know which direction they want to take it in. And so it's like if you don't believe in your own product, how is your consumer, your customer, supposed to believe in if you're, if you're, if you're constantly changing and, and, and making you know amendments to everything you say is, you know, what your company and what the future of your game console stands for. Now, the 10% aspect of it, a lot of people are saying, hey, look, we're going to get 10% more power uh, out of the Xbox One now because of the, the you know, the Kinect user interface is going to be removed. All that free power is going to be going straight into video games. No, that's absolutely a lie. And the reason that it's not true is because if this Xbox that came out, Kinect, less was incompatible with it with the Kinect, maybe. But the fact is, you can still buy this $400 Connect. You can go ahead, go out and buy you another camera and plug it in, and you'll have the same functionality as the Connect right now. So it's not like this power is going to be removable, and then uh, you know you can you can add it and subtract it whenever the 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 camera is plugged in. So I don't think it's going to affect you know the power of the console at all. Personally, uh, I'm just waiting to see if whether I'm getting a lot of uh, feedback, guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting to see um, if this is actually a smart idea. I know that they're probably going to end up selling more consoles. Me personally, I'm more apt to buy it now at $400 and $500. Sorry to interrupt you. You still getting feedback? No, not anymore. Oh, well, okay. I don't hear any feedback. Okay, continue. Sorry. Okay. Sorry to cut you off. No, wow. no problem. Yeah, now, <laughs> there, now there's no feedback. Wow, that was weird. Um, I don't know uh, whether or not this is going to be a smart move in the long run, but uh, I know they had to do something because Sony was running away with the prize. I mean, Sony was running wild, just destroying them in the sales department. And so, you know, this is what the consumers wanted. People wanted a connect free Xbox One, not a discless Xbox One. And so we'll just have to sit and wait and see if whether or not this will bring them into, you know, a closer margin of sales so they can really go head to head. But personally, I don't think this connect list Xbox One is going to be more powerful at all. I think it's just going to be a lower, lower price Xbox One that you buy the, the connect separately with. Okay, that's fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, Robbie, so what do you think about this whole thing? 
So about the price being three ninety nine. First of all, I have to just want to express it's three ninety nine without the connect. Sorry, I didn't clarify that before, but it's three ninety nine without the connect. And what? Do, how do you feel about this, Robbie? First thing I have to say is about the power reserve. The thing that connect takes up ten percent of the Xbox One's horsepower. If that's true, I hate the fact they went with connect because if the connect is taking away the power of the system, that's stupid. They should have never bundled that shit in. That pisses me off, to be honest. That they basically dwindle the power of the system just to reserve that 10% of that power just for this stupid peripheral I could give less of a shit about. <laughs> so I'm glad they're getting out of the box. If that means more power in the system, that's awesome. I'm really happy they're doing that, and that's great. Now, with this Connectless Xbox One bundle, I think the sales will probably jump up a lot. Like I I think I said myself to Beast, like, I'm going to buy an Xbox One now. There's no Kinect bundled in. I really wanted to get one, but I was like, screw this Kinect. I don't want this. Like, You want me to just use the voice commands? Like, Pay 100 bucks for this little camera that I'm just going to use for like Xbox on and stuff like that. No, no way. I'm not doing that. So the fact that Microsoft did such a bold move, like pushing back from everything they went on, like we're going to have always online, uh, DRM, you're not going to be able to download games unless you're connected. They reversed that, and the fact they re reversed this whole connecting to is great. Like, Microsoft has balls, no matter what you want to say. They got balls for doing all this. Like, they really went back on everything they said. They said they never remove connect. It's a part of our vision. We are never going to take this out of the console. It's good stuff. <laughs> and then they kept it in, so... Or they took it out, I mean. Sorry. So... This all around is a really great move for them, and I think Microsoft has the balls to do what's right, and they're really making big pushes towards making the Xbox One a more profitable system. I, that's a good answer. I like that answer. That was a lot. I went on there. Yeah. No, it's fine. That was great. Well, great. I just want I to start. I have a lot to say about that. I've been thinking about it quite a bit. So. I want to start off by saying that they didn't choose to do it. They are forced to do it because they know their sales suck right now. And there's no way in heck that – forget about the PS4 leading. That's fine. But not PS4 leading in the U.S. Nah. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Bill yeah, Gates, all those people, territory. Microsoft don't want to hear no one beating anyone from in the U.S. Like, you can't beat Microsoft in the U.S. It's not going to happen. They don't, they're not going to let that happen. That's why they have to make a move. That's number one. Number two, now we're looking at the, the price three ninety nine, right? The 399 price, if you think about it, is very competitive, but then the factor of it being not as strong as a PlayStation 4, that's a new thing. So what do you do as a company? You say, well, if you, if you were the same price as your competitor and that person has better graphics than you do, what are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to make a special announcement stating that, hey, we're going to get 10% increase. So now you're hearing, okay, it's cheaper it's the same price as the PlayStation 4, and now it's going to get a power increase. <gasps> I'm going to go out and buy one. No. That, that's not how it works. Because you've got to keep in mind, when it's 10% when it's cheaper, right, or 10% uh, less powerful with the Kinect, right, what you're saying is it's not that you're going to get 10% increase. There's only so much your graphics can handle. The, the hardware you have built inside of it has a max to it. When you're talking about 10% less, you're talking about 10% less of what you – should have had with it. It was built with less parts, lower parts than the PlayStation 4 to begin with. So even if you get that 10% back, you're going to be at a disadvantage compared to the PS4 because it has a better GPU. Case closed. Doesn't matter what software you have. The only thing you could count on is that when you improve your software, Sony is going to not improve theirs so that you could catch up to it. But if Sony improves their software and gets speed up their speeds, how are you going to catch up to something that has a better hardware? I just don't understand it. That's like you saying that I'm going to go out today and my Honda Prelude, which I have a Honda Prelude, it's going to beat a Ferrari. Hey, you can plug it up and get an update. Yeah, I can, I can seriously upgrade it. I can put parts in it to try to speed up to, to be as fast as a Ferrari. Take a I can. You get a 10% power increase. But like the, when the Ferrari, that, I'm hoping the Ferrari doesn't do anything. What if the Ferrari gets upgraded? Then what do I do? The only way you'd be able to beat a Ferrari is if it doesn't start up. Uh, Damn it. I'm trying to make an example. <laughs> it's a bad example, but I make an example. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, uh, it's like a, a symphonic uh, VHS player 
saying that they're going to get more power to compete with a DVD or Blu-ray player. The box 720p. I, I know. I, I know the power differential is not that vast, but basically, you can't say that we're going to give you an update that's going to change the hardware specs of your system. That's not going to happen. Updates will be able to optimize the the hardware that's already on your system, but it will not be able to uh, innovate. Uh, you know, change the hardware that is in your system. You're not going to be able to change the GPU. You're not going to be able to change the the DDR3 RAM to DDR5 RAM. That's something that's just not going to happen. So I think it's a fallacy, and of course it's spin. You know, uh, a lot of people out in the world don't know uh, what hardware specs really are and, and whether or not you can really change them with updates. See, the thing is this, like, will it help the Xbox One? Absolutely. It's going to make it a little bit better, without a doubt. There's I'm buying it. What was that? It's already gonna work. I said I'm buying the console now, yeah. so it's got to be working. That Probably is. other people are going too. So. But you're buying it because of what, though? Because there's no connector. It's a hundred dollars cheaper. Like yeah, but are you really buying it because there's no connector? Or you're buying it because you want to do what? The game. I'm buying right? it because I don't have. I'm not forced to use this peripheral that. But what I mean, I what I'm saying is, like, you you have games in mind that you want to play, right? Yeah, Sunset so, Overdrive is the one that's exactly, really pushing. It comes to down the to the games. That's what it comes down to. They better start getting away from this resolution thing because you're only going to hurt yourself. You're not going to be able to compete resolution with the PlayStation 4. Everyone's make a big deal that in future topics that we'll talk that the PlayStation 4 is not the 1080p for some games. They make a big deal out of that. But no matter how bad a PlayStation 4 is with graphics or specs, the Xbox One's be behind it. Always lower. Always. It, so it, to me, it doesn't make a difference anymore. We already know the specs for these two consoles. It doesn't matter what you improve. Even if you bring that DirectX 12 that they're claiming it's going to be the, the end-all, be-all, the savior. Not you know, really. just like Titanfall was the savior. You know, not it's long. not the savior yet, and we'll <laughs> see what's going to happen with that because, like I said, that's the software improvement that they're hoping on, which I was talked about before. It doesn't work like that. Your software will improve your hardware, but it's not going to do much to the hardware. Like, it's not going to if, – if Sony, which Sony, by the way, is trying to hire people – Right now, they have like job advertising to hire people to fix their software. That that means they're looking to increase their software too, the performance. That's all it takes. If they increase their software, Microsoft increases theirs. Next thing you know, you're looking at the same distance apart from each other. So it's the same thing. We got to get past that and worry about the games itself, and that's it. The way yeah. like it used to be, the games, and not the resolution. I think that E3 is going to be uh, phenomenal this year. Yeah. Be believe it or not, I mean, I've got at this point in my life so much faith in what Sony's doing. It seems like they've just been on this roller coaster of success as far as their PlayStation brand goes. Yeah, the rest now, of the company is not doing well. Don't speak of that, though. Yeah, uh, and so my Microsoft hasn't been doing as well, you know, in the eye of the public. And, you know, once you see something out in the open long enough, it becomes the truth. And so they have it. But I think that uh, this E3 with Microsoft, of course, going before Sony, and and Phil Spencer talking about we're going back to a video game centric plan. We're going back to the games. We're going to forget about this TV shit. We want it to be about you know what people bought the Xbox for initially, the video game experience. I think when we start to see more games like Sunset Overdrive on the Xbox One, which the game does look pretty exciting, okay? When we see more independent, I mean, not so much indies, but when we see new first person, I mean, uh, first party, third party titles coming to the Xbox One that are actually fun and look exciting and you can't get anywhere else. That's when the paradigm will shift. Mm. So, I mean, that's the what Xbox I'm... Xbox One that are actually fun. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, I think for both consoles, there's not really many must-have games. Now, PS4 has more games because a lot of them are great indies. A lot mm. of them are great indie titles that you're not going to get anywhere, anywhere else. That really blow, you know, mind-boggling. This game is so damn fun. I had no idea that this game was even out, but it's awesome, and you get that experience. Yeah, you get you get these kind of experiences on the PS4. Not not nearly as much as the Xbox One, uh, but I mean, as time progresses, we're going to start seeing their first-party titles come out. I'd say probably within the first 18 months, two years of the console's life, we're going to start to see, you know, what the real meat and potatoes of the consoles are, and uh, you know, move toward the games. Um. So now that we're talking about Sony, just want to let you guys know in this podcast, we're not all Sony diehard fans. We're gamers. Okay? We're, we're not Sony fanboys. No. Yeah, no fanboys in here. Like, we do appreciate it, but we do have some news <laughs> about Sony, and it's not something that's good. 
So, Beast again, why don't you tell us about Sony's uh, continuing their financial woes? What, what's next with that? You got you had something to say about that, right? Are, are you sure you want me to do this? I mean, I mean, I know everyone knows you have Sony tattooed Sony on your arm. Sony. <laughs> so, actually, there, there actually is a guy that, who works at my GameStop right here, and he has a Sony. No, to on his arm. Yeah, he's a video game developer. Guy, uh, I don't, I don't know the guy's name, but he makes video games. And he's hardcore into it. Sony guys, they just come out and announced uh, their uh, losses for the the fiscal year, ending in in March 2014, and they've uh, uh, announced 2.7, I mean 1.27 billion dollars in loss. That's one point two seven billion dollars. <laughs> that's, that's where the that's where the that's where the B guys. Um, it's hardcore losses, and uh, we wanted to explain to you guys what these losses are stemming from. Because when people hear this, they're like, "Oh, Microsoft's going to fucking kill them. They lost all this money. They they suck." Now, from my perspective, this is what I got to say about Sony. Sony is a jack of all trades, but an ace of none. Uh, the only thing they're really acing right now is their PlayStation brand. PlayStation is doing phenomenal. We all know this, and this is like the number one thing that's bringing money back into the company. It's they had, keeping them alive. Yeah. yeah, they they had to sell off, you know, major corporate buildings. They've had to sell off. Uh, well, not too nerdy. I'll let you talk about some of the things that they sold out off, and give me your uh, your thoughts on why they sold these things. All right. Well, let's start off with the things. The division of bio. They're not officially. From what I heard, they didn't officially sell it yet. They had some buyers. They didn't officially sell it. Yet. That's why they had to go with the loss. Okay, you're you're playing. You need to get rid of the computer. They're not the only ones that's losing money. Just I just want to throw it out for you guys. Computers are not making money anymore. Dell it read, reported a loss. H HP people that are big in computers that you think will make money, they're losing money. No one's making money on PCs anymore because they're built to last now. No one buys computers all the time, and people are moving to tablets and other devices. Exactly. Everyone's moving to tablets, mobile devices. No one's buying PCs like they used to. The only the only division that are pretty much making money are the ones that are, are like the like gaming, like computers and stuff like that for gaming. Those are the ones making money because they, they build your computers, stuff like that, and they give you a, a customized computer. Besides that, no one's truly making money on PC. So that's why Sony realizes they're gone. TV is the same thing. People are buying TVs, cheaper brands, Vizio, Samsung, and Sony's doing horrible with the TVs. And on top of it, they have to front money for the new 4K lineup that they have, which who knows if people are going to buy it or not. Because some of them are expensive, some of them are reasonable. They're, someone like, I think it starts at between three, no, 4000 to like once 25000 The 25000 I don't know who the heck's going to buy that. What? Um, but the 4000 ones are a little more, like, it's better. Like, it's, they're, you know, they're like 70, like 70 inches screens, like between 50, like, a hundred inch or something like that they have, but oh, that, that's no, nice. Yeah, yeah, the hundred inch one is the twenty five thousand one. Yeah. yeah, but just to let you know, you can press a button and it curves. It can, it'll, it's a bendable TV. You press a button, it curves and it goes back. But, yeah, uh, but, but but what happens if you look, if your house gets foreclosed on? You can curve it over you when you sleep on the street, yeah, and that absolutely. way the rain. Comes off both sides. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's made out of gold too. I'm not too sure. Hardcore, <laughs> man. Uh, yeah, I don't know about but, that. But. Another thing that they, another reason why they, they have a lot of loss is because they front a, a console release. Everyone loses money during a console release. You put out so much money for the hardware stuff like that. They just got lucky because they got the money back because the the PS4 did so well. But you gotta keep in mind all the money they put into it. It's it's like pretty much a break even, and finally you start to gain money back when you sell more. Another big loss is Blu-rays that people keep forgetting. Sony's losing money on Blu-rays because no one is buying Blu-rays anymore. Everyone's streaming stuff, so it's the Blu-rays have dropped, and Sony spent all this money on Blu-ray, thinking that people are going to purchase it, and next thing you know, people are not purchasing Blu-rays like they used to. You know, and that that's a huge problem right there. That's another loss, like. When you look at the cell phones, they're starting to get back on track with the cell phones that they make, which you have. Can you pick up that phone again, Beastly? <laughs> Once again, when you look, Sony does make pretty decent phones, and they're starting to get back at that. But to be honest, overall, their cell phones were not doing well for a while, and they had a loss for that as well. So This is Sony Xperia Z1S. T-Mobile, baby. Unlimited, unlimited, unlimited. <laughs> so, so basically, they have to... 
sell these divisions that are not doing well. The ones that they could focus on, obviously, the TV. Let's see how they do with the TV, if they could compete. If they could compete with Samsung and bring 4K because this is a new opportunity. You know, they lost the 1080p era. They lost it. Samsung, Vizio, they all took those over. LG took it over. Now it's a new new era where people are going to start getting a 4K. Could Sony win that era? That, there's a new opportunity for them. This is what they have to go for. What you said about uh, them losing in the 1080p uh, war is absolutely true because when I went to buy my 60-inch uh, Vizio, yes, people, I went inside Best Buy and I was looking around at all the TVs. I was probably looking to spend about two grand. You know, on, I, I, I could have spent up to two grand on a TV at that point. And I wanted something really awesome. And uh, I was talking to, you know, some of the guys who there in there who worked with the TVs and knew, like, the best specs. And I asked him, I said, what are some of the best TVs you got going in here right now? And he mentioned three, and the Vizio was one. And then when he said Vizio, I said, come on. It sounds like Vizio is like a bootleg VCR. I don't want that. He said, listen, sir, a few years ago, I would have totally agreed with you. He said, but Vizio, the way they're making their TVs now is right on par with the top TVs out there. And see, this TV was only 900 bucks. It's a smart TV. It's 1080p LED. And when he started going over, tell, you know, giving me all the specs on it, the HDMI's, the USBs, you can plug, a, a, you know, a flash drive right up into it and watch TV straight from your flash drive. I was like, oh God, seriously? I watched the reviews on it, and they were like, for the price, you're not going to get a better TV. It compares, it compares and competes with most really big, high-end TVs in the same size. And Sony's uh, TVs in the same price range would have been five, six hundred dollars more. The the reason why is this though, like I have a Sony Bravia and I also have a Samsung, right? Now let me tell you, the Bravia is still no problems I had. I had it for that one for about six six years now, no problems. The the Samsung is my newer one. I only had it for almost two years. Do you realize that the panels bro- burned out in one spot? Luckily, it was on a warranty that I had. They came and replaced it. That would have cost me nine hundred dollars to replace the panels that they have to take out and they replaced it. Nine, it would have cost me that much money for that. So, yeah. my daughter has a Bravia in her room. Yeah, and like the Bravia, not once that I had to do it. This, this is my problem with Sony. Sony, unfortunately, um, unfortunately, Sony. What are you doing here? Not too nerdy. Jeez. <laughs> Sorry about that. I you're, you're, for a you're back. You're, you're back. We we were just hearing a lot of background. Yeah. Music. Oh, I think I'm on my computer a little bit. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's okay. That's why if I mute you, I'm not, you know, I just mute for a second. I get a little tired of sitting in the same position. That's good. (laughs) That's funny. Sorry. But the Bravia, the the problem with Sony is that they build the stuff to last. And they're putting expensive parts in these TVs, and they don't realize their competitors are not putting those parts in. Those competitors are giving you TVs that won't last you as long as the Bravia because they know that people are going to come back and buy another one. And people don't care. People would rather have some quality for five years and then buy a new one than have something that's going to last them forever and be expensive. They, they'll rather buy three of the cheaper ones than buy one that's expensive. That's usually the way it is. Now. It used to be the other way around, where you buy the most expensive thing to last. They don't Floor, care anymore. Floor model TV, baby. I had this thing since 1972. Dude, no um, one does that. People would rather buy ten Vizio TVs. To each of them lasts one year if they had to, which it doesn't last one year. But I'm just saying they'll rather do that, and they'll still be under the price of one TV of Sony. You get it? So that's what Sony. That's a big thing. Sony's losing money on. Now, now I don't know if I should take this as a warning or you know, is this like the movie Fallen? Do you know that my Vizio is only going to last for two or three years? I'm kind of scared now. Not no, no the Vizios now are getting better. But I'm saying like, it's just that Sony overall, the the quality parts that they put in it will last you longer. But the problem is you're paying for that. But so, the, the, the one thing about that is that technology is changing so rapidly now Do you want a TV that's going to last you for 15 years when in eight years you might have a completely different resolution set. Yeah. Like like within the next 10 years, everybody, I think 10 to 15 years, everybody will be on 4K, okay? That's what I'm thinking. Maybe 10 to 15 years, this 1080p will be you know, kind of like the, the big TVs of now. It'll be something old and dated. But... If you have a TV that's going to last for 15 years, you might not be able to jump on board when that new technology changes, or you might want to and not want to get rid of your investment or you know do something with it when the technology is changing so rapidly. So I'm thinking maybe a TV that lasts seven or eight years might be a good idea. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. Like it, it's up to up in there. It's like when people see the price. That that's another reason why, like 
who knows? This whole thing going back to the subject before that, the Xbox One, this price with Sony C's three ninety nine, they sort of forget about the quality of what you're buying. And they just start caring about the price. Which one's at the price that it is, and that's what I'm gonna get. You know what I mean? That's just the way it is, because sometimes you can't afford more. You know, so you go with what you could get now. And if you want to upgrade later, you upgrade later when you have the money. And that's the thing. Sony doesn't realize people do not have money like they used to where they could just throw it away because they don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. They don't know what they have to spend money on. So that's why they'll rather spend something on something that's cheaper but it has good ratings and good quality. You know, no, there's nothing wrong with Samsung or Vizio. Like, they're always one of the top mentions. Samsung has the best color. Vizio is the best overall in price everything. Vizio is number one in price and everything. Samsung is good with price, but it has the best picture right now. So like those are dominating the TV market for that reason. So like, what are you going to go with? If you're a new person, what are you going to go with? You're going to go with the one that's cheaper that gives me the same quality as everything else. Why would I expend more money when I don't need more money? Because I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. And I think so, that's so, why it's like that. So you're basically saying pick a PS4 even though the Xbox One had a price tag. <laughs> <laughs> I I the that. <laughs> They're both the same price, and one has better. We'll just say that for now, okay? <laughs> I'm just messing around. You told, you told me during the pre-show you do have an Xbox One. Yes, I, I, did, I didn't know this. Yes, I, I thought you. Told, I said it in the beginning. Like I don't have. <laughs> no, I, we thought you were a Sony fanboy. You know. No. <laughs> <laughs> he said I was Sony fanboy. No, but I played the Xbox One. I did Dead Rising Three. You know, I did um, Rise for four hours, and I was pissed off, and I, I beat it in, like, six hours, and I was I didn't like Rise at all. I really hated Rise. Dead Rising 3 I liked. I really? just didn't. I felt like the only way I knew that it felt like an Xbox One game is because of the amount of zombies on a, at one level. Like, the amount of zombies on the map is how you knew, okay, this has to be next gen. Besides that, if I were to look at the picture alone, I would not think that's next gen. The graphics right. sucked on that. Everything looked horrible on it. But at the same time, there was a lot of zombies on screen. But they also have frame rate issues. But it overall, it was a it, it's horrible frame rate issues, man. It wasn't even at 30 frames per second sometimes. Like it was it stuttered. But my point is, the game itself was fun. So the fun factor canceled all that out for me because I I love Dead Rising, you know. So like the, the playing that was fun. But besides that, I didn't even use Spanish 911 on Xbox One yet. Like, I can't wait for the achievement. When I finally do it, like, it should give me achievement because I, I the first time I'm on Xbox One, and it technically is a day one Xbox One, so I should get some sort of achievement when I first log in. <laughs> so we'll see what's there in the future. Wow. So, I mean, uh, you didn't play, I mean, any of the other games, Forza? You just played those? I, you... I'm, not, I'm not really a, a, a car fan like that, Forza. And I, at the time, like, I got Gran Turismo 6. So, like, at the time, like, I was thinking that I'm going to get Gran Turismo 6. So, like, I didn't really care about, like, I'm a fan of Gran Turismo, so I'm not going to go get Forza. I never liked Forza, but Forza does look really good. I just. Yeah. I heard those two, they actually went against each other. Yeah, they like. PS3 versus Xbox. PS3 versus Xbox One? Really? Yeah, well, I mean, technically PS4, because the remastered version of, for, of uh, GT is supposed to be coming. The PS4 supposedly. Oh yeah, wow! Cool. Yeah, they're supposed to bring it to the PS4. There so, was a lot. There was a lot of hoopla about uh, the the actual aesthetic of uh, GTA on the PS3. You mean Gran Turismo. I mean Gran Turismo. I'm sorry. Not Gran Turismo. Turismo. <laughs> GTA. Gran Turismo on the PS3 and how it could graphically stack up next to Forza for the Xbox One. Were they kind of close in comparison? You think? I think the gameplay, yes. The sound, no. Forza had way better sound. Like, I, get keep on. I did get a chance to play it. I didn't own it, though. That's I did not own it. I didn't play the whole game, but I played a demo version of it. And the sound for Forza is right on. The picture looks good. The sound's right on. But the picture for the Gran Turismo actually looks good. Like, I like the quality of the graphics and everything for Gran Turismo 6 on a PlayStation 3. looks really good. The sound, though. Sound, I don't like the sound. Sound has, like, a weird noise. Those okay. cars sound strange. Yeah. yeah. I'm so I'm kind of interested to see if they bring out the PlayStation 4. Are they going to improve the sound or not? Wow. But the reason why I think it's better for them, they have more tracks, more cars to select, and they're older. It's a, I mean, it's last gen, and like they have more cars and tracks. And then you're looking at, you know, everyone was upset with the Forza and the, all their microtransactions, all that stuff, the way the microtransactions work. But I mean, 
to me, it, it doesn't really matter about the micro microtransactions because if I don't want it, I'm not gonna pay for it. I could care less. <laughs> you could tell me something costs a thousand dollars. I'm like, if I don't want it, I really could care less. So that that I don't care about microtransactions. So, but the game itself, GT6 was pretty good. I thought so. Wow. I, I haven't played a, a Gran Turismo since I think Gran Turismo, the one that came out with the PS3, the one when when the Prologue? PS3 first, huh? Gran Turismo 5 Prologue, that was the first one on the PS3, I believe. Uh, I don't know if that was the one. Are you sure it wasn't GTA 4? Wait, for which one? For what? The PS3? For the PS3. Yeah, that it's, was Gran Turismo 5 It's supposed Prologue. to be the Prologue, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I, actually, see, I'm not a racing fan, guy, so I might be talking about PS2. I just can't remember, but... I, I, I personally I stick with kart kart racing. I like Mario Kart. I like games like that. You know, Little Big Planet kart racing. Mm. You know, those to me offer a little bit more than just um, kind of like a simulation. I like the the look of the simulations. I think Forza Five looks just ridiculous as far as the cars and the tracks. Outside of it, it gets a little bit wish washy. When you look outside at the audience and the trees and stuff, you can tell yeah. that that they're pushing back and using all the real power of the system for the cars and stuff. But I think it looks good, but personally, I'd rather go sit on the expressway and look at cars go by if I want a simulator, you know? <laughs> yeah, the simulators are cool. I mean, there, there are some games that sometimes simulators are fun, but some of them are too realistic. I feel like if I'm going to go that realistic, I might as well play that on my my gaming PC because I feel like I want to go all out because I have, like, I have more than one screen, so, like, I, if I really want to be sitting down in the cockpit, I could do that with the split screens, three screens. Got three three different like computer screens, so I could split it. So then I can actually feel like I'm in the cockpit of the car. You know what I mean? If I really want to go all out. But other wow. than that, like the graphics for me doesn't matter as much for the the car racing games because I think they all look good. They all claim to be the best, and then the next one comes out looks even clearer than the one before. So I think it's easiest to get the highest resolution and frame rates. In a in a racing game, car racing game. So now, keeping with the, the the subject of simulations, your MLB the Show, fifteen. Yes. Uh, that is a simulation, but those simulations are actually really light. Now yeah. you were you were saying last week that it might be a little too realistic. Have you and gotten any any chance to play online since then? And I did play online. By the way, the online works. I, I take it back. I was playing online with people that I decided to play online with on my friends list. That worked perfectly. So I, I'm assuming that maybe it was someone that might have had a bad server, bad internet. I don't know what the connection was. I don't even know who was hosting. He might have been hosting. So at the same time, like it could have been him that it screwed up. So I, I got to take that back. That I gave it a bad review for the online play. It actually worked when I, I played like four different games with four different people. So and it worked all four times, but that was when we uh, went together in a party chat and did it. So I know that works perfectly so far. So uh, I know so the movements and stuff like that. It just it, it's good. I think they have to move, like work on more of a. I don't know. I guess they look too stiff when they when they throw and stuff like that. That's just some nitpicking over here. I'm just nitpicking on the animations. I think that like I think by next year that's something they could work on. But like they they focus on graphics hardcore on this. You can tell they up like the resolution, everything. The graphics for the game is really high, so I think that's what they focus on, and they sort of lost the actual movement of the players, because you see like they do all the the players' actual moves. They just look a little more stiff doing the moves. That's all. So, so they focused on the, the 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 appearance of the characters and not so much the motion capture. Yeah, well they yeah they did it. I just think that the characters look too stiff doing the motion because the 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 characters still do like. For example, you know how every baseball player, when they're about to go up to bat, they have their routines that they do? They have, like, all of them right on. For individual players that, like, take forever to swing a bat, like, their rhythm that they do, their little routine, they do the same exact thing. They do the same batting stance. They do everything that they'll normally do. They just seem a little more stiffer when they do it. So I, I feel like if they make them more flexible and make them look more realistic moving, that's something they can prove. But once again, I'm nitpicking there because – People well, really don't focus on that. But if you really want to detail better, then you have to nitpick. You know, I want this to improve. And I want that to improve. Well, I, I think we're, we're going to be approaching one day, probably, hopefully within our lifetime, a photorealistic video game graphics, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so when things start to look so good, all you can do is nitpick the one little minute things that might be off. So it's, I know I, I feel exactly where you're coming from. 
I know that, hey, look, this game looks phenomenal. Everybody knows this game looks great. But the thing is, when, you, when it looks so good, the one thing that doesn't look as good is the thing you notice. Yeah. So that's exactly – I know that's exactly where you're coming from. Uh, I look forward to uh, some new games coming out. I'm thinking about uh, this new uh, announcement, guys. Far Cry 4, what do you guys think about this? Robbie, it's all you, man. You want to talk about Far Cry 4? What do you think about that? All right, pressure's on, pressure's on. Sorry about that terrible segue. <laughs> no, that's fine, that's fine. Um, so first of all, just going back a little bit, Far Cry 3, I remember I got that right around the time it came out. I loved the hell out of that game. Like, I've always complained, especially that there's never been many good like hunting games, especially the ones that are dedicated, like Cabela's Big Game Hunter. Those just those are terrible. Get rid of those. But Far Cry is like such a fun open world shooter where you can do like anything, whatever you want. Like go kill a shark and skin it if you want, or you can hunt animals, you can craft, you can go whatever. Like just paraglide all over the damn world and everything. And like Far Cry 4 already has me completely sold on it. Number one, because it is on the new consoles, and number two, because just having more of that open world gameplay that is just so fluid and so fun, like, they completely have me sold on it. It's just more Far Cry, and I can't wait. Now, I, I didn't see this uh, story personally. I had a lot going on, you know, with, you know, this weekend, uh, anniversaries and stuff. What is any information that you might have gotten out of this reveal that you can share with our audience? A picture. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Uh, you guys keep talking. I'll I'll look for the pictures. So I can screen cap it. But yeah, I uh, personally I I grew up well a teen years playing the Cabela's games. Go way to go, America! We're gonna go shoot some deer. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with hunting games, but I totally feel you uh, that they are kind of dry. They they lack spirit, and the ones that have come out over the later years really do uh, seem like they have a tacked on story mode. And and, uh, and Far Cry 3 really did. It incorporated all the hunting aspects of those kind of games, but it had an awesome story, a really good, uh, you know, protagonist that was like a regular guy, and the main villain who was a fucking demon that you had to kill in real life. I wanted to kill the actor. What a, no, yeah, what a psychopath. My God. That's so, just crazy. But that's the thing. When you can create a world and characters that are that believable and, and you become emotionally invested in something, you feel it, you know? Uh... When I played that game and I saw what was going on and saw my buddies being killed, this guy just going crazy, and then when you finally see the world, that's actually actually uh, just a beautiful, uh, you know, tropical, tropical yeah. location and animals and cougars and stuff running around and all the stuff you could do. I was mind blown. For me, this is such a different take on what they had done with the previous Far Cry games, and I'm super stoked to see what they do within the future. It looks like we got it. Now, not today. Go into a little bit of talking so the guys can see this image. Guys, this is. The image. Right. If you see right here, it should automatically lock on the, the image anyway. I think it's mainly on the image. Anyway, um, I don't know what to make out of this. We don't know who this guy is. We don't know who anyone is, really. Um, I can tell you he looks fabulous. That's yeah, what it's camera. <laughs> but it's besides, glamour. Besides that, um, there's really not too much you can say. They said it's going to be taking place around the Himalayas or something like that. And it's a made-up place, so I forgot what it's called. Iraq, yeah, it's called. and that's a made-up place. It's not a real place, but it is around the Himalayas, <laughs> and that's all we know. Um, so uh, to be honest with you, that's what it looks like. I personally am, like, I'm curious about this, to be honest well, with you. Well, it, it looks like this guy's a little curious, too. He yeah. Looks like, <laughs> he might have been the Prince's Revolution or something. Yeah, he – I have no idea what's going on, but <laughs> – I, to be honest with you, you want to know my real opinion about this game? I just want to know when Far Cry 4 Blood Dragon 2 coming out. I oh, want to see Blood Dragon. Yes. I don't care about, oh, I don't really care about the Far Cry 3 as much. I mean, Far Cry 3 is fun, but like when they had Blood Dragon come out, I was like, Far Cry 3, like who the heck cares? But this was so much better. Like It, it had so much like comical stuff inside the game, and it used the same engine. And it, it was, was just, just you know, it, it just amazed the job. The funny game. thing, it was a mini game. It was a mini game within a real game. And all of a sudden, it, 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 I felt like it stole the this, this show out of Far Cry 3. So I'm hoping that it'll do the same thing for the next one. I never played that game, not to nerdy. I saw tons of reviews on it. Amazing. Every, yeah. Everybody was like, this game is the shit. It's, it's not just that. Like, it also it poked fun of th different games, like, within the game. 
like different stereotypes, like things from the eighties, like different things, like different things will pop up. You know what I mean? And it, it, throughout the whole game, it was just funny. It was fun, and it's futuristic style. It just looked cool. You know, it just was a fun game that you just either were laughing or you're just like, wow, that's cool. The effects and all that stuff. Like it was just a fun game. So you should definitely play that if you didn't get a chance. I'm sure it's really cheap by now. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I could probably afford it. Who knows? So awesome. So <laughs> wow. crazy and out there. Well, I mean, I'm really excited for, and this goes across the board for any games. Any games that have come out on the previous uh, generation consoles and they decide, hey, look, we're making the next one on the on the current systems only, I want something just for the PS4, the Xbox One, and the PC, it's making you know the people who really want those games buy the new console and move us forward because when we have a huge install base of next generation consoles, these people can actually focus on the power of that console alone without thinking, well, the PS3 might not be able to do this, so let's just not do it. We don't want to make it too great on the PS4 and the Xbox One because if we add all these extra effects and then we put it on the PS3, people are going to feel duped. So it it inherently makes a developer not push. They won't push as far as they can, push as hard as they can to make a game an awesome experience for the next-gen console. So for me, it's like whenever they, they're making a game only for the next-gen, I think we have a better shot of seeing something awesome rather than, hey, look, we're going to make it for everything and port it over here and port it there. So. Yeah. That well, excites me. Well, I have a question for you, Beastly. Um, since uh, you talked about that, that you want to see games that are focusing on the next gen only, well, what about games like Halo, for example, that's going to rehash or remaster games from the past? Um, sort of like what The Last of Us is doing, what Tomb Raider did. Like, what, How do you feel about this, uh, about the new Halo game? Like, Halo uh, 5 Guardians? Uh, not the, that one, yeah. We well, could talk about that as well. The, the oh, Master the Master Chief Collection. Yes. I think it's a great idea. Now, don't get me wrong here. There, there are great games on, on last-gen consoles, and even back to the Nintendo, they're great games. If you don't touch the, the actual gameplay of them and port them up and make them better than they were, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's the best of both worlds. The game has already been proven to be an awesome experience. If you make it better by giving it a fresh coat of paint and maybe higher resolution, better frame rate, that's a win-win for everybody. What I'm saying is... If we already have this new technology that's available that you're able to do more on than you were with the last consoles, and you're developing for this generation and the last generation, a lot of developers, not saying all of them would, but a lot of developers would try to meet somewhere comfortably in the medium in the, in the middle of both consoles and not push the next-gen consoles to their absolute limit because they fear backlash from the, the last generation of video game console owners that, hey, it looks incredibly sick on the next gen. You did all this new stuff. The, the frame rate was so much better. The, it looked so much more awesome. You got all these extra characters here, but on ours we got you know a dumbed-down version. I think a lot of developers are going to try to meet somewhere in the middle. But when it comes to porting up a game, do that shit as long as you want to. I think porting up great games is always going to be fun. I mean, imagine if they just started porting up instead of you know having backwards uh, capabilities, what if they start porting up all their, their top sellers? What if they start port, porting up some of the, the greatest games that come on the last-gen consoles and maybe you know giving you a discount whether or not you owned it before? I think that would win for everybody. Now, just to clarify, I'm going to explain what this says. According to GameSpot, it says that it should be – it's rumor. It's still rumor. It's not completely confirmed yet, but it says it's going to be Halo 1 through Halo 4 are coming to Microsoft's latest console with the Master Chief Edition. Now, they're saying that it's going to... Uh, they're not going to know the frame rate yet or resolution, how like how high they're going to bring up the HD resolution. They're moving to 80p, 60 FPS. These are old games. Come yeah, on. but it's still, it's, still, it's still HD. You don't know how they're going to do it. Because, unconfirmed. Yeah, so it's, it's not undetermined not right now. Yeah. And it's, it's unlikely to include stories like Halo Reach and Halo ODST. So it's, it's, not, it's most likely not going to include those. And the way that they said that their their goal is to um, it says is to to refresh audience memory memories. That's in quotations. So by them saying that, that's why I kind of feel that it's it's going to be campaign mode only. Mm. So if it's campaign mode only, then you're not going to see the online because that's something I would want. Like I already said, I, if you gave me Halo Two and I could play online again, all everyone then I'll do it. But the fact that it might not be there is something that, to me, it's not something I'm good. Like, I, I'm not good with that. Well, when you think about it, okay, when, when uh, these games kind of came out on the Xbox, the original Xbox, was that that was DVD format, correct? 
Yeah, uh, the Xbox. So you're looking at 4.7 gigabytes of storage for each game. Now, Blu-rays hold upwards of upwards of 40 gigabytes, right? Uh, and, uh, it depends. They have like a, it depends how many layers. Each layer adds yeah, more, so you can have like a two layer right. that goes up to 75 gigabytes. I th- and think that's how it is. Yeah. So okay, I think so it's 50 or something gigabytes. It, it, it's possible that they could port all these games over. I mean, just even if they ported them over, and you know, with all the graphical upresing and things they do as far as you know, um, frames per second and resolution, you might be looking at eight gigabytes per game. So that's 32, and they might use 15 to incorporate an online feature. I would hope. I mean, Halo is a Halo without online uh, functionality. It really isn't. I mean. Could you, the thing could is, you, they said refresh story, though. Like, to me, if that's what it's refresh story, that right there tells me that that's why they're going to they're do it so you get to play the campaign mode so you understand where Halo 5 starts. I, I honestly hope that's not the case because can you imagine that, that game would be the biggest game, period. I mean, it, it, if you think about it, how many servers could it have, though, because you're going to have a server for each Halo 1, Halo 2, Halo 3, that, that's going to be complicated. So mm-hmm. I understand why it would be complicated, but... Can they at least just do Halo 2? That's all I'm saying. Yeah, it's like, it's like they're saying that people are saying Halo 1 and people are saying Halo 3. You know? There are yeah. people who like them all. Me personally, I think Halo 2 was the best. Well, those three. Uh, forget those other people. Just, just like, <laughs> Halo 2. Them. They don't matter. <laughs> and and, and a little disclaimer we don't give a damn about Halo ODST. Yeah. yeah. Halo Reach, Reach is pretty good, though. Reach yeah. is pretty good. Yeah. I mean. The, then uh, what you know, Briar would have hopped in and said, "What's his favorite Halo game?" He always talks about uh, uh, assault. What is it? I don't know. I thought he said Halo. I thought he said three was his best. I might oh, be man. wrong. I forgot which one it was. Yeah, he I talked about. Sure. He loves Halo. I mean, I know. Are you gonna find the video? I, I, no, I can look up the video right now. <laughs> oh, and I think he always talks about Halo, Spartan Assault. Oh, uh, which one is that? And, that was um, a downloadable one that just came out like a couple months nah, ago. Maybe he didn't say that. I don't know. He said something, but <laughs> I know that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. He likes one of them. I don't remember. Yeah, Sorry, Brian. Right. You will watch this. Like, I can picture him like either watching this now or watching later, like screaming, "Yo, no, like, oh, I like this. I like so this." Wrong. <laughs> well, let's just let's just say that his favorite uh, shooter of all time is uh, give me a really terrible one. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, staying uh, staying with this subject, uh, Halo Five. So that's that's the whole purpose of this. It's going to lead into Halo 5, which is officially not going to be here till uh, 2015. So they already said they already yeah, announced it's not. Be, that's no one. Yeah, it's not going to be till when? Uh, is it the summer 2015? What is it again? Or? I think it's just 2015 right now. We don't know exactly when. But no, I think they good. actually. You guys talk about that. I think they actually announced when it's delayed or when it's not. It's not delayed, but. Can they never announce the release date? Well, I, I didn't well, think they said twenty fourteen at E three last year. They were saying it would come out this year, but now it's pushed back. Yeah, so. it's pushed all the way down to fall two thousand fifteen. Oh. It <laughs> it fell all the way back to fall. Well, uh, I don't think it fell technically because the technically they didn't say the exact date. They just put the screen thing, but we assumed it was gonna be two thousand fourteen. Now so. on, on the cover of this uh the, the the art that was released with this reveal, there appears to be a female protagonist. Yeah, they debunked that right away. They already announced it and said it's not a female. That's the first thing they said because everyone kept saying it's, uh... Yeah. <laughs> I like boobies! <laughs> I miss my boobies. <laughs> Damn. Well, that's a, very, that's a very shapely guy there. Yeah. Hey, uh, you got two cannons in your shirt or are you happy to see me? I'm happy to see you, motherfucker. Because <laughs> people yeah. kept saying, what's her name, was it? Cortana? Yeah, they kept saying, people were like, is it Cortana? Is it Cortana? So, like, he finally came out, like, they came out and officially said in a statement that it's not a female. And it's a character that you've never seen before. Oh, wow. So they already came out and, like, officially said that right after. They didn't even give people a day to speculate that they saw that and they're like, oh, boy, we're going to have to say something. But I'll tell you one <laughs> thing. If it's That's a man, that man has a female body. I'll tell you that right now. It might be it might be the, the main villain from Far Cry Four. They might have gave him a you know <laughs> so hey, that, per- that person has I mean he might on. not be a female, but you got a female costume on. Just yeah, that's, that's hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh well I mean I'm excited about this. I didn't think they'd be showing this game. Um I didn't think it would come out in twenty fourteen. 
I thought they were going to show it at E3 this year because of all the public outcry. I mean, it's a it's a it's a bittersweet feeling when you hear uh, you know them constantly talking about Steven Spielberg, the Halo show that's coming to the to the Xbox uh, One. I mean, this information is okay for people who want to watch TV, but the the true heart and soul of the Xbox is the people who play the games. And so when you hear about the TV Halo show and all this stuff, okay, it's fine. But we really want to see the game. And so I was expecting, and I'm still thinking that more than likely we'll see something at E3 related to this game. I don't know if they're going to, you know, put something out just to appease the gamers, maybe show a quick render or a cut scene. But honestly, I didn't think they were going to release anything in 2014 mm -hmm. because they have not shown anything until this point. And we got E3 coming next month. So, um you know, I figured it'd be really late if they did, but 2014 sounds more reasonable. But now that that's that's a known thing, what else does Xbox have? Well, the thing I need to tell you too before we uh, before you change that real quick, the TV show that you're talking about. By the way, it's rumored that if uh, Showtime, that's who they're partnering with, is going to get the show before you get it on on the Xbox. So now mm -hmm. they, that's rumor has that's what's going to happen because before. It was supposed to be a big thing. You get the Xbox, you get to see it live, and all. You get to see. It. You would think that they'll reward the people that have the Xbox first, but it looks like, according to the deal, more than likely it's going to be Showtime's going to get before that because they want to hype up the game. So that sucks. What incentive does the person have? Like, why are you not rewarding the true fans that actually watch Halo, and you're trying to introduce it to a whole bunch of new people first? Why, like, what do they care if it's a week late? Or, you know what I mean? They don't know about it yet. They don't know about the series. So why do they care if it's a week late? Why wouldn't you put it on the Xbox One? You know what I mean? Because that's how Microsoft operates. Well, because they, money. They want, they want a little money agreement with Showtime, so. You know what? I, I remember, it, I'm getting these press conferences wrong. Was somebody on the stage at E3 last year saying, yes, we can? My fellow Americans, yes, we can. <laughs> Xbox One, yes, we can. I remember these lies, <laughs> and everything they say is a damn lie. I just tell the truth sometimes. Well, it's either it was either Sony or Microsoft, because I know he, uh, I know Nintendo was on stage last year. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> Sony, Sony, remember they said no, we won't. <laughs> no, we won't. <laughs> oh man, that's great though. Yeah, so I mean. It's 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 a sad thing to hear as far as their Halo show. I mean, golly, I mean that's the one thing that that the 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 Microsoft Xbox One, Xbox Live subscribers had it was just we get this show before anybody else. We got Xbox TV coming. That's going to be a big thing for people who want TV besides Netflix and Hulu. And we get this Halo show because we're gamers before anybody else. Steven Spielberg's behind it. He's backing it. Don't know on what level he's actually involved, but his name's involved. And now if it goes to Showtime, that, that would really piss me off if I was really looking forward to this show. I'm looking forward to the game more than anything else. But, damn, that's pretty screwed over. I, I still can't get, I can't get excited about games like that anymore. I, don't, I, I learned my lesson. You know, when you work in the industry and when you're a gamer, you learn your lesson to get excited about anything until you actually see the real gameplay Trailer. I want to see gameplay snippets. I want to see a demo. I don't want to see a picture, a box art, and get excited. No. I'm not going to pre-order games anymore from a box art. I'm Shit. not going to do that. Have I'm you sorry. done that before? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, my God. Well, you guys, remember the song? They just Metal Gear Solid. Click, click. Oh I, 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 no, I, I, times that I literally took money and threw it at my screen. Just throwing it at my screen, hoping that I could pre-order the game already. Nothing happened. <laughs> Nothing. Just for them to be like delayed, like, and I know people did that for Watch Dogs. I know you people did that for Watch Dogs. Oh, Watch Dogs gonna come out. That's gonna be a launch title. One year later, May twenty-seven. <laughs> One year At least later, it's not getting delayed now. It's been confirmed. It's gone gold. So yeah, that's good. Man, I could see it now, not today. And and like Briar Rabbit, I could tell it was like a woman who's hurt you. And I know the whole story. <laughs> Nachinari was looking at TV, he was like, oh my god, I can't believe they're making this a Superman game? This Nintendo 64 is going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, dude, I was so upset, man. Oh, man. That mer but, like, now we talk about games, right? That that feeling that you get when a game is delayed, 
Now, if we look at our next topic, the next subject, there's more games delayed, like always. It feels like every week now, 2014 seemed delayed, like yeah. it was going to be such a strong year. After 2013, we're like, yo, we had, we were spoiled last year. I'm not going to lie. We had so many games that came out last year. We felt that, oh, 2014 sounds like it's going to be great. We're going to kick it off with Watch Dogs. And, oh, it's okay. It's cool. Uh, we're going to kick it off. With, uh, you know, we got the Elder Scrolls Online coming out. You know what I mean? It's going on PC first, but then PS4 and Xbox which one's going to get it. <laughs> what, what other what other games are delayed? We Let's see what we got. What, do, what are you guys thought on the Division officially being delayed now? I mean, it, it's first Elder Scrolls Online, then Dying Light. But now the Division is delayed. How well, do you guys feel about these games being delayed? How do you guys feel about that? I feel pretty bad about it. Is there something over my house? <laughs> I think it's an airplane that landed somewhere. I actually mm -hmm. like that. It, 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 it took me back to, uh, I'm trying to remember, the, the Alien it's movie with Tom, Tom Cruise. No, um, The Division is the, the, the game that's been delayed that actually affects me the most. I, when I saw that game's you know, uh, official announcement trailer, mm -hmm. I said, shit, this is next gen. There's no way around this. This Incredible. looks close to photorealistic. It's fast. All this stuff's going on third person is awesome, delayed, depressed. Um, Elder Scrolls Online, it's already out on PC. <clears throat> How hard could it be to port this over to the, the, the next gen console? It can't take that long. It's, it's I'll tell you why. If you I guys mean, played it on PC, it's broken? It's, broken? it's a mess. Like, really? broken. <laughs> like, it's a mess. Like, I'm, I'm not even going to say it's. It's a mess. It doesn't even make sense. Like, you go, like, the whole point of it, it's you would think that you're allowed to work together and go on, like, a quest together. Well, then let me explain to you what happens. I'm on, you know, I have a quest with my friend, right? You go to the person. First of all, if you're on different levels, there's no level system where one person ranked up and your friend's ranked up. You Like, you guys can't do something. Not to mention... The, your friend will have to go complete a quest, and you have to wait till they're they're done with their quest, and then you go to that quest, and then you could you could complete the quest. So if you already completed the quest already, right, you can't go back to it with your friend to play it again. You have to wait till they're done with the quest, and literally they disappear on screen. They're in their own world, their own quest, and then they come back and they reappear. Yeah, that 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 sucks. Damn, you, you can't do anything. You it, it's it's like. What's the point of this being a party with other friends and you can't be with friends in a party? Like, <laughs> to me, it's like, like I've heard it's an MMO without the MMO aspect, basically. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you're missing the M's in the MMO. Yeah, you know, uh, this good. game, how, how far back has this game been pushed? Is not back hey, to 2015. For life, hopefully. I hope no, it's pushed for life. Like, they have to rethink their life decisions right now because I don't know what – they might have to rename it. Say, like, it's a, it's a single-player online. That's what they should just say because you can't play with a lot of people so because it doesn't work. Solely single-player online. And then, like, it's so glitched out for, like, when you're playing uh, – you know, when you're playing against other people online, like, it's so glitched out that people are leveling up quickly on glitches. Like, people are disappearing. It, it's just a mess, dude. Like – I haven't felt this bad in the game since Battlefield 4, so which is not that long ago. <laughs> but still, wow. like, I feel it's on that level. Well, me <laughs> feels on that level. Believe it or not, when I first heard the announcement that, that they were making in Elder Scrolls Online, it was a questionable decision to me in the first place because every experience of the Elder Scrolls ever has been a single-player affair. And it's it, you didn't need it to be online. First, I didn't think it needed to be online because the world has always felt so alive that you felt like you were playing with other people anyway. It was just a, a different kind of experience. I mean, it, I'd be pissed off if they said Fallout 4 was going to be online because it's not, that's not what Fallout is all about. And to me, the Elder Scrolls games have never been online. Of course, it's it doesn't detract from the single-player games. But if you want an MMO, you could, there's plenty of them out there that work. So why even throw your hand into, you know, throw, give yourself a chance to do something and potentially fuck it up and sully the name of something great, doing something that you're not, you know, an expert at doing. Just stick to what you know. Stick to what you do. I think, I think uh, Angry Joe said it best in his review for this. He said that they literally 
took the Elder Scrolls name to put it in a game that maybe if that game didn't have Elder Scrolls name, it would have been an okay game. The fact that you took Elder Scrolls, you're expecting more. You're expecting better. You're expecting what you saw from Skyrim. That's mm -hmm. the first thing you think of. And when you go play the game, it's nothing to do with Skyrim. It has it literally destroyed what Skyrim built up, the way that Elder Scrolls and Skyrim built up. It finally built up to a level that it was just great, you know? And then you look at this, and it just like you it looked like a quick caching for using the name and then completely destroying the world because it does not feel like the world does not feel like it's supposed to. And it's I have no idea. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't know how they could save it. I don't know what they could do. You you saying you saying that to me really makes I don't know why I thought about this immediately when you said that, you know, your last statement. I thought about the movie Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within. <laughs> the, the CG movie that came out yeah. in the early 2000s that cast in on the Final Fantasy name had nothing to do with any of the games that I was in the movie theater watching, and it was a cash cow on on a name that got millions of people to you know to spend money, and basically had nothing to do with the original concept. So yeah, it, it sounds like more of the same. I'm just gonna wait for the next Elder Scrolls. I mean, I, just hearing this alone. That's why I haven't played the new Final Fantasy Online, A Realm Reborn. When, when the last Final Fantasy MMO came out, it was so badly broken that they just said, basically, Square said, fuck it, we're, we're done with this game. It's not coming to PS3. It's so bad, we apologize. We're going to do it right next time. See, so, the thing is they might be able to save it, though. The one advantage that they have is the fact that they have two different launches. They had a PC launch, so they got to see what they did wrong, and now they have the console launch. They have a chance to save this. If they were to fix it up, if they delay and they fix it up and they come back, now they're going to get people to be interested in it again when it's re-released. You know what I'm saying? So they have a chance to save themselves. It wasn't like everything was released together on one day that they are trying to fix it. It's sort of like Battlefield 4. See, that's the thing. Like They had the, the luxury of two releases. PC first didn't work so well. So think of the PC users were the beta testers. They're oh. fixing everything using those people, and then they're going to put it on the consoles and change it. So they still have a they have opportunity to save. Not that they're going to, but they still have a chance to. But uh, I want to talk about the division now, uh, real quick. The division. I do you guys think that like it's much you know it could be coincidence, but do you think that Watch Dogs delay affected the division? Even though. In the beginning, Ubisoft said, don't worry, we're not going to delay any more games. Didn't they say that? Remember how everyone said, is it going to affect other games, other titles, since they're pushing back Watch Dogs? They stated, no, it's not going to. And then all of a sudden, I think people forgot about this. They just announced that the vision is delayed. So isn't that in direct correlation with the, you know, their next the, the Watch Dogs? Because how many studios? They had a lot of studios working on Watch Dogs. They have a lot of studios working on the division. So isn't that affecting your division release because Watch Dogs isn't done? Yeah. And we'll know for sure because they still have the other one, which is the crew. If that that MMO, that car MMO is delayed too, if that's another game that's delayed, even if it's only delayed for a month, then you have to assume that they are falling behind because of Watch Dogs. So. Well, uh, the division, like I said, it, it looks amazing. I've never played it. It looks very fun. Uh Watch Dogs, the same thing. You know, I've never had a chance to play it. I've seen lots of screens and videos. We all have. It looks very fun. I don't want another Battlefield 4. You know, yeah. uh, Battlefield 4, it, it, it's broken the hearts of the masses. And uh, we don't need that as gamers. We don't need a, a you know, developer to say, well, fuck it. We gave them a date. Let's push this out. And then, you know, you got a patch and patch. We, we already had, um, uh, what I'm trying to remember the name, New Vegas. Remember when New Vegas came out? When Fall yeah. New Vegas came out, it was broken. It had so many bugs and hiccups. It was being patched over and over and over and over again. We got a game that people are expecting to be done right. If, if it takes a few extra months, me as a gamer, I say go ahead and delay it because the experience will be right. But if a person is expecting something to be great and it comes out screwed up, you only get one first impression. Battlefield 4 will always have a scar on it in the memory of gamers, even if no matter how good it gets. It might get to the point where it has... No bugs, everything's fine, but we'll remember for the first six months of the game, it was virtually unplayable. Mm -hmm. so, so rather than do something like that with games like Watch Dogs, The Division, The Crew, take a little bit of time, as long as the people understand why, rather than lie and say, well, us pushing back Watch Dogs is not going to affect The Division, 
Don't lie. Tell the truth. Okay, we got multiple studios, but we're going to pull our studios together to make this experience the best for you. So if that's the case, the division might take a slight hit, but we're going to do the same thing with the division. Pull, us, pull all our resources to make sure that game is right for you. We want these experiences to be great for all the gamers. It might take a little bit more time, but in the end, I promise you it will be worth it. I wouldn't mind if they said that, and I don't mind that they're doing it. I know for a fact these games are coming. You know, before we know it, we blink. Twelve months has gone by. See, so, as well, go ahead. No, I said I had a possible solution. The last week, I said the same exact thing you did. Like, I I like the fact that they delay games to make sure it's perfect. They make sure it's good. Unlike what you know, EA did with uh, Battlefield. Right? That's a perfect example why you want to make sure it's perfect before you release it. But here's a solution that might help gamers as well. If they should change the pre-orders. They should change the pre-orders in the sense that you cannot release a pre-order for a game. Okay? You can't say you could pre-order a game until we're gold. Until the game's gold. Once the game is gold, which is usually a month before, then you can start accepting the pre-orders. That's when you start accepting. If you want to be fair to the gamers, I think, since I'm gamer slash developer, I think the solution to everything is once you're gold, which is should be a month before or a little bit of, like month and a half sometimes before the release date, right? Once you're gold, then you accept pre-orders. That's the day that you accept pre-orders. Well, that, and then that, no one has a problem with that because you know it's going to be released because it's gold. It's ready to go, the game. It's done. And I no think one that's has a, a problem. A great, great solution. You need to be uh, tweeting some of these developers there, not too nerdy. You know what I mean? Because like, that's the way it should be. Because if you release like that, they get still gives people plenty of time to pre-order. You know people only need a day. People are pre-order like crazy. The game's ready. They're excited about it. You know what I mean? And that also gives more people confidence that if you're saying the game is ready, it's gold, that means that you're getting more people confidence saying that they're ready to go on this date for a fact. Boom, I'm pre-ordering now. You know what I mean? Or, or, or like, getting, when, the, when they, when they uh, do a reveal, like, you know, E3 reveals, rather than say, you know, this game is going to be available this date, they can just show a quick reveal and say pre-orders available from this date forward. So it might be six months from the actual date of the, the reveal, but it gives them all that time just for the pre-orders to be you know, accepted. Exactly. Similar, similar ideology. What do you think about this, Robbie? Oh, finally. I haven't been talking like an hour now. It's just, <laughs> just I, I thought, the whole time. It's so I, quiet. I thought you converted to Islam and started to practice silence. <laughs> <laughs> just be off time and be like, okay, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, I think that's a pretty good idea, especially with how Watch Dogs, like, that was one of the games I was really looking forward to to play on PS4 and launch. And then when I got delayed, it's like, oh, God darn it. Like, just looking so forward to that. That was a big game I was really looking forward to, and now it's been pushed back. Like, having this idea of having a pre-order, like, guaranteed that you'll get the game right after it's gone cold, I think that's a really good idea. I doubt that's going to happen. I don't think anyone's going to go with that, but I think it might be a good thing, but it, I never think it's going to happen. There's no way. I, people are going to... Because when... Especially when a game's revealed, it's like, pre-order now, and then people are like, holy shit, gotta go buy it. You gotta go pre-order. Set my pre-order down. So that stuff is proven. That stuff works, so... There's no reason they'd change I think that. developers see here's a problem, right? Like to me they're they're getting sidetracked, okay? They're they're getting they're pushing the limit. Now you pre order stuff a year before the game's released. For what? You didn't even get to see anything of the game yet, and you're a pre order for what? And like the reason why they're doing because I'll be honest, developers has numbers to hit for pre orders. And they are supposed to hit a certain number. So they wanna to reach that number, they want the maximum amount of time to reach that number. They don't want to shorten it. That's why they wouldn't want to shorten it once it's gold, because they're afraid it won't hit those numbers. To be honest with you, those pre-order numbers mean nothing, because pre-orders can be canceled. That's why they got to stop looking at pre-orders and worry about actual numbers. Because you can have the best pre-orders in the world, and then next thing you know, they, something happens. There's a rumor that happens a week before the game's release that people cancel the pre-order. For Perfect example, example. Watch Dogs. What was that? Oh, I was going to say the same thing. Go ahead. Uh, as you say, the resolution for Watch Dogs. Go ahead, Beastly. It's all you. <laughs> no, no. It's not, it's not about Watch Dogs, but hypothetically, if, if Microsoft had kind of revealed that the Xbox One was coming out before E3 of 2013, like say, for instance, they did it in April of 2013, said, Xbox One, reserve yours now. You go to Games, GameStop, you put down your down payment for the pre-order, then E3 comes. How many people would have went and got the, the refunds back? A shitload of them. Immediately, they would they would have watched E3 and went straight to GameStop. So it's definitely not etched in stone. But please.
Please continue with your watchdogs facts, sir. Yeah, I was actually I was bring like related to the next subject that we we're gonna talk about, which is the resolution of watchdogs. Like right now. Thank you, thank you. I felt I felt empowered on that. But uh, the resolution of Watch Dogs is 900p. You know, it's official is 900p on the PS4. It's 792p on the Xbox One. Now, resolution to some people matter. Some people it doesn't. But some people were upset that even the PlayStation 4 people were upset that oh, it's not 1080p, 60 frames per second because it's literally That's that resolution it. at 30 frames per second. For them. it's not even 60 frames for either one of them. It's 30 frames officially. So people are not happy with that. So that's something that could kill your pre-order right there. The game's not released yet. I could just go there and click decline. Or especially you have Amazon. Amazon, you just cancel online. Amazon, you you don't pay anything up front. Like GameStop, you could you could transfer that over to something else. I heard. So you could do whatever you want with that. Like something that small could just change your pre-order status. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't think you need to count on pre-orders. You need to count on real numbers. Stop worrying about pre-orders. Worry about real numbers. But anyway, what do you guys think about that and also about the resolutions and frames per second? All right, you first, Beastly. I was going to let you go first, brother, but I no, will. come on, brother. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you go. Uh, I, I, think, I think resolution matters more, guys, than a lot of people put on. Um, Personally, I'm not a resolution whore, but if, if I know something's better than something else, I'm going to go with what's the best, okay? If it's within my price range, I'm going to go with what looks the best for, for my experience, okay? That's why we get these, you know, these 1080p TVs, because we want 1080p experiences. We don't get 480p TVs. We want the best experience that's available for that time. Video games are called video games because they're, they're games in the form of video, so why would you not want the best video that you can get for each game. Um, Briar Rabbit, he's a good buddy of mine, we all know this, but Briar Rabbit, he's in the, the mindset that, you know, a game experience supersedes the visualization of the game. And I partly agree with that and partly I don't because some games like uh, Dead Block don't have the best graphics, it's not high resolution, it doesn't have a really fast fr frame rate, but it doesn't debilitate the game. The game is still very fun and you don't need that. But some games push those those aspects forward. You have a better resolution. You have 1080p graphics. You got 60 frames per second, and, and that's that experience. But when you have two of these games and one is slightly better than the other, who's not going to pick the better graphically, the more superior version of the game? And Briar Rabbit, he, he, this is something I want to ask him next week. I want you to answer this, Briar Rabbit, because I know you're watching this right now. You told me that uh, you did not want to get the new version of the PS Vita because you would have lost that OL, uh, the OLED screen uh, that is, you know, part of the original PlayStation Vita that, you know, when you bought the first Vita. Now, what's the reason behind that? I mean, you're going to have the exact same games on both Vitas, but you did not want to give up some of that potential visual resolution uh, going with the newer, slimmer version and missing out on that screen. So... On some level, graphics do matter. On some level, resolution does matter, and I believe it matters more than people say. Um, the the Xbox One, just plain and simple, they've got to win on games. They've got to win with their own first-party games. They're not going to win with multi-plats. It's just not going to happen. It's pretty evident right now that everything that's coming out to, for both of these consoles is always going to perform better on the PS4. So I think the Xbox One is a powerful system. I think they got some great stuff lined up for us. But when it comes to multi-plats, they're going to lose. So the thing that they need to do is focus on experiences for the Xbox One that are going to be superior than the experiences that you can get on the PS4 because resolution alone is not going to give you an experience. Frame rate alone is not going to give you an experience. You need to have imaginative developers. You need to have talented studios making games that are going to resonate with the consumer. And so that's my thought on it. What do you think, Robbie? Well, the main thing I want to bring up about this resolution debacle is it's not, like, obviously everyone's going to say, oh, it's all about the game, but who cares about the graphics? Graphics don't matter. Well, the main thing about this, um, this guy I'm subscribed to on YouTube, Review Tech USA, made a video about it, is the problem about this is basically that developers are having to cut corners with these new consoles. Like, why isn't Watch Dogs full 1080p 60 frames per second? It's a cross-gen game held back by the PS3 and 360. It's a brand new system that should be able to do it no problem. Like, it shouldn't even be a thought. So, the main problem I see with the resolutions in these games is that it means these consoles aren't as powerful as maybe we presume they will be, and maybe they won't be able to last, like, 
five, six, seven, eight years like the last console generation because there's, there's just too many limitations. And that's my main concern with the uh, resolution. Like, the Watch Dogs will look amazing on PS4 and Xbox One, no matter what the resolution is. It'll be obviously like be pretty high, but that's my main concern with it is if this resolution uh, calamity keeps going, it just shows that maybe these consoles are too limited and it could just continue to keep going on like this. Well, if, if I can interject something real quick, I'm sorry. Good point. Um, it, it is a pretty good point, but when you think about the reality of it, a lot of people were thinking that video game consoles were dying. The PS3 and the Xbox 360 was, were very popular consoles with 80 million sold, and with, with all due respect, in all honesty, both of these consoles probably could have lasted another five, six years alone. They could have probably done that. The thing that's holding back consoles as far as, you know, gameplay is the changing technology with PCs. PCs are constantly advancing. You're seeing more, you know, RAM. You're seeing faster processing power. And so PC elitists, PC gamers see what they're able to get out of their console, or out of their PC, and they expect or want something similar out of a console. The PS4 and the Xbox One are vastly superior to the, to the PS3 and the Xbox 360. They definitely have you know, longevity in their future. It's it's still new. We're still in the first year of development cycles for the consoles. The PS3, when it first came out, they were having a hell of a hard time developing things for the for the cell process. I mean, it, it was really, really difficult initially to, you know, create cross-platform games for the Xbox 360 and the PS3 because the PS3 was just harder to develop for. I think as time grow, goes on, the games are going to look better for both consoles, and it'll start to kind of even itself out a little bit. Uh, that's just personally what I think about it. I think and that's why... Oh, sorry. Yeah, you can go ahead, Robbie. What were you saying? All right, I was going to say... Um, I guess it's not super important, but I was just going to say, maybe just for Watch Dogs, this is another case of being held back by the old consoles. Like, maybe when these cross-gen games are finally out the door in, like, a year or two from now, we won't see these resolution problems anymore because developers can solely focus on the PS4 and Xbox One, so we won't have to cut these corners in terms of resolution and frame rate. I agree that some of the, the last gen is holding back, but not for Watch Dogs. Watch Dogs, I think, is a perfect example of how high the resolution is because you already saw the PC specs. I actually think this might be a win for the PC gamers, because that might mean that they're actually trying to raise the resolution, raise everything, and it's actually very graphically intense, I think. And I said that from the start, because when I saw the, when I listed the specs for you guys a while ago, it was pretty high specs for PC alone. It's so ridiculous. that means when they said 1080p, yeah. 60 frames per second on the, the Sony website, I was amazed. I'm like, there's no way that that's possible. And I was kind oh, of... I thought it was, but... No, I, 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 there's no way, because from the specs that you saw on the PC... The, the Sony, the, the PS4 is not those specs. So yeah. how are the PS4 going to be able to run something when they're telling you what the specs you need to run on that on the website? That just doesn't make any sense to me. Unless they completely redid stuff, like redid the background, everything, and changed everything, which I knew they weren't going to do because people would have complained about that as well. So that's one thing. Another thing, I think that the reason why people pay attention to resolution so much these days, it's because if you think about it, every generation for console, we had some sort of big change, every sort of leap. Last generation was we jumped into HD. We jumped into HD and for the first time. Well. You could actually see the difference. Now, wh what are you going to do when you go from one HD version to the next? Now you're starting to look for what? The next level. That's why you're, people are so anxious to see 1080p games, because they already saw 720p games. That's why people want to see 60 frames per second, because they already saw 30 frames per second. Mm -hmm. they, they, they want to justify the reason why they bought a next generation console. Like that's, that's what it comes down to. So when people say the resolution stuff doesn't matter, in a way it does. Because how do you justify, like they say, oh, well, it's, it's all about the game. But how do you justify someone purchasing something that's supposed to be more advanced if it's playing something that similar to something else? Just because the levels might be bigger, the world might be bigger, yes, but at the resolution, why am I staying with the same resolution and everything else? That's why people want to look at it. I'm not saying I necessarily do, because if it's a multi-plat, more than likely I'll rather get for the PC if I'm really worried about the resolution. I'm not going to get it for the console. So obviously I'm not completely worried about the resolution, yeah. but I understand why people do that. They need to justify like an improvement. 
How do you justify that? By it went from 720p before and it's moving up to 1080p. It went from 30 frames per second and it moved up to 60 frames. That's how you justify making it next gen. Otherwise, you might as well take away that next gen name because yeah. to them it feels like it's really not well, next gen unless it improved. Now, uh, as, as far as uh, Watch Dogs goes with the PC specs, guys, it's an open world game. Okay, so it's not linear. It's not mm-hmm. like Uncharted or something. It's, it's absolutely open world. And just with the, the specs from the PC, I think it would be virtually impossible for a console to run that at 60 frames per second. I mean, the way it looked on the PC, I think that was max settings, that seems impossible for 60 frames per second because that game is so graphically intense. And the fact that it's an open world, they got to pull all the resources into your, your, your immediate surroundings. And so I'm thinking that might be why it's 30 for both next-gen consoles as well. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I never thought. I never thought for a second it will be 60 frames per second. But I was kind of thinking, like, I was trying to see, are they going to get to 1080p? Because you got to keep in mind, 900p is 80%. It's, like, close to 80% of a 1080p. So 900p is closer. But then 792 is it's not 80%. That's, like, that's another, like, that's like 60% if you do the mm-hmm. math. It's, like, close to 60%. So, like, you're almost half of what the resolution is for 1080p. So that's why I understand some people are upset with that, you know. But, like, you have to understand, these are consoles, and it's just the way it's going to be. And another thing I want to add before, when you said that um, it's just the start of the generation, the problem that we have with that is, like, it's not just that. you got to keep in mind that x86 Architect has been around for a long time now. So it's not going to be as much improvement as everyone thinks because mm-hmm. we already know how to program for the next generation PC. of consoles. Like, we pretty much know how to program it. We're, of course, we got to learn how to tweak more power from each console, but as the part of, like, programming specifically, we already know how to specifically program, except for the the ES RAM for inside the, the Xbox One. That, that is a little challenging right now, but besides that, everything else pretty much we know how to program for already. So just letting you know, like, it's not going to prove that much more. And we're going to get that... 1080p 60 frames per, per second experience when they unlock that 10% of the GPU from the Xbox One from that Kinect. That's not <laughs> well, on that note, I don't know if you guys heard that uh, the OUYA is going to get an update soon. And <laughs> so the OUYA is going to be um, it's going to have zero resolution with zero frames per second. Holy shit! <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, I want to say a Nintendo real quick because we haven't mentioned Nintendo, so Nintendo. I just wanted to say Nintendo. <laughs> like, no, real quick, I have, I have a vlog coming up soon that uh, I talk about about Zelda. Like everyone keeps rumoring that Zelda is gonna come out for E3. But, like, what, what do you guys think about that? Do you think Zelda will be coming out during E3? Do you think they're gonna announce that? Uh, yes. I, I I think it could happen, but I'll let you go ahead, Robbie. I think so. I gotta tell you guys, though, am I the only one who doesn't care about Zelda? I think it's maybe because I just grew up as a PlayStation guy, and I never really had like an N64 or GameCube. Well, yeah, you're younger, so you're that's young, why. so you don't know. You don't. You that, don't, and I, you well, don't I understand. Just, I, don't know. I just played it. I'm like, yeah, it's fun, but I'm like, I don't know. It's just alright. So, but in general, yeah, there's just not enough on the Wii U to be honest. That's really holding my interest. Like, I've been thinking of getting rid of it for a long time. I gotta tell you guys, if Nintendo doesn't blow the doors off this year's E3 and doesn't show us like tons of awesome games that give me confidence in the system. I'm just I'm done with it. Well, There's just not enough to play on it. Well, uh, if you're gonna sell your Wii, send me a message and let me know, because I might be I might be buying one. Guys, the reason why I mentioned this because uh, Nintendo announced that they they said something when they got interviewed saying that there there's always one game that could change the fate of a console. So that's what they're saying. So like they're talking about one game. They're hyping it up like one game's gonna do it. 3D so, Mario World was supposed to do that? It sure didn't do much. For no, it did well. But Mario is not the the game though. Like I, I guarantee you, like more it's not Mario. Mario Kart. Then what? What's gonna help the Wii U? What's Zelda, gonna do Zelda? Zelda. Well? I'm sorry to say, Zelda has more power than Mario these days. Yeah, actually, he does because Zelda's that's seen a enough. lot. Zelda's seen a lot less, and there are tons of people out yeah. there. Who, who have a strong tie with Zelda. I mean, all his games have been great. Mario has had some mediocre outings, okay? That's just yeah. the truth. Yeah. People, have been waiting, people have been waiting on Zelda since the last Zelda game on a console, which was Skyward Sword, which blew fucking minds, and that was on the Wii. So, I mean, 
that game was great and, and magnificent on the Wii. They actually got a, a new console that's actually a, a 1080p co- a console that's capable of doing more. People are going to lose their minds if they see this. But I think that one game the, to rule them all on Nintendo console is Pornhub Tycoon coming to a Wii U near you. Yeah, I think... Yeah, we're, honestly, uh, keep, now I'm going to keep the console for Pornhub Tycoon. I'll keep it now. <laughs> I think the game that might be released... I think everyone's thinking Zelda, right? I think that's what everyone wants, Zelda game. But I think the game that they ultimately should bring, the game that probably will sell them a lot of consoles, way more consoles than Zelda, is a Pokemon game. If they ever had a true Pokemon game, like that Pokemon Stadium or something like that, yeah. and they brought it for Wii U, I think, honestly, that might even sell more than Zelda. I think yeah. because there's more yeah. people, that's how the 3DS was sold. Like People want the Pokemon games on DS, 3DS. They want all those Pokemon games. That's why they sold so well. If you were to get that onto the Wii U, I think that might be it. But then again, I still think it's between those, the Zelda or maybe a Pokemon game. But, but the way... But, but don't don't uh, you know leave Samus, Samus Aaron out of this. Because Thanks, that's... Metroid? That's right. Yeah, Metroid. I mean, uh, Metroid is its one of those games. It's, it's there with Zelda. She's not seen nearly as much. But usually when there's a, a Metroid game that comes out, Nintendo kind of revolutionizes the, the, the series, goes in a slightly different direction, and it works. So, I mean, they, they're sitting on gold mines, okay? They truly are, not to nerdy. They got, of course, Pokemon, which spans all age groups. Pokemon is for little kids, teenagers, people my age. I got a buddy at work who sits with his Nintendo DS and plays Pokemon like he's looking into his future, okay? Yeah. Uh, th- th- it's just, it, it spans all ages, and it's a great game. You go out and collect. Zelda, of course, go, we, we were there at the beginning, you know. We were there w- when the foundation was laid for gaming, not too nerdy. And Zelda was there, and Zelda, all the games that had Link in it from then till now have been great. So they could do that. That could change the paradigm. And I think a really good... Metroid game that somehow merged the, the dimensions of third 3D and uh, 2D somehow would be fucking sick. If you could get a really good Metroid game that had like Metroid Prime type gameplay in it as well as the original Metroids in it, that it would switch depending on what part of the game you're going through. Or maybe you could play the whole play through the whole game either way you want it. That would be fucking awesome. So, I mean... They, they got a lot of things Nintendo could do, but they're just not doing anything. That's so, the thing. So we're in agreement that it's one of the characters from Smash Brothers. It's one of them. It's, it's so... Yes. That's true. It's yeah. one of the characters of Smash Brothers. It's, it's, it's going to have its own game soon. Like, for the Wii U. It's Wii Fit. Wii <laughs> Fit game. Or Mega Man. Oh! <laughs> dude, oh if it's dude, Mega Man, dude, all right, I take back what I said if it's Mega Man. I'll pre order right away. <laughs> I take back the last topic we talked about. I'm going to screw up and get a pre order day one. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. He's going Man... 180 just like that Xbox One, not to nerdy. <laughs> yeah. oh, he, he used to work at Microsoft. Uh, let me ask you a question, not to nerdy. If, if they did make a new Mega Man, which, of course, Capcom, Inafune, they, they've had this terrible separation of uh, ways the actual creator of Mega Man is no longer tethered to him. That's got to feel terrible. But um, if they were to create a new Mega Man for the Wii U, what type of Mega Man game do you think would be well re- best received? Would it be a 2D Mega Man, like Mega Man 8 or Mega Man 2? Or would it be the 3D, like Mega Man Legends? What do you think will work best? Um, I think, and for the Wii U, I think it might be 3D. I think it'll be what if it's like, what if it's like Mega Man versus Metroid, <laughs> and they had they had of like the first person viewpoint of both of them. That would be sick. If it's sort of like Metro Prime, I think that that will be pretty neat. You know, what I mean, I oh, think wow. that would be pretty cool. That could that could actually work pretty damn good. That's what I'm saying. Like if they wow, combine the two, like something sick. like that. That would be pretty sick, you know. Because, I mean, the 2D is good, but there's so many old school Mega Man side scroller. I think people want to see something like that in this generation. Yeah. So they'll they'll I think I think they'll perceive if it's good like Metro Prime, like if they do it like that, I think they could build it to be like that. You know what I mean? I think it'll work well. And 
Hey, I'm just throwing it out there. Mega Man versus. Uh, oh damn, that's yeah. like the Terminator right now. That's you all look. you, baby. That's all you, not yeah, to I'm saying, no. I, I, I'd imagine, love to see that. <laughs> or, or imagine them working together, right? At the end, Mega Man gets to insert his memory stick into Samus Aaron. Because what if, what if that was the evil robot that they built? They built Samus, the evil robot, and now Mega Man has to stop Samus. Just oh. saying, just throwing it out there. <laughs> Throw it out there. You know, are you watching these <laughs> Throw it out there. Just say it. And that's who you have to stop. Wow. That would set, that would be the game that could change the paradigm right there. Don't forget what happens when you actually win and you take Salmon's powers. Yeah. <laughs> Just say it. Really fucking sick. But the, thing, the thing is, it would that wouldn't work because there'd be too many people on the, the side of Samus for her to they wouldn't want her to be evil. Well, well, that's be, why, yeah, you know, Visa, I got you covered. That's why you get to choose your side. Yeah, you get to choose. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> when, what's the release date, Nacho? <laughs> yeah. oh, no, um, I was gonna say 2014, but I just delayed it to 2015. Oh, damn it! <laughs> Darn it! <laughs> oh man, that's the thing, guys. These major corporations that that produce these games. They had real gamers in there helping to, to make these choices. I mean, real gamers who actually play these games and actually have love for them and brainstorm and come up with ideas like this, that's a fucking sick idea. I mean, Mega Man versus uh, Metroid? What? Well, it's like Batman versus Superman. Sick, yeah. Do you know how they treat their, their fans that are loyal and uh, the fans that make games and stuff, right? You know how they, they treat them? They flag them on YouTube. That's <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true, too. That's kind of bad too. They're like, oh, we want to thank you with this flag. Here Damn you it. go. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> it's, uh, I, got, I got a question. It's, it's not video game related, but it's nerd related. That's a little bit of what we all are. Uh, not I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not too nerdy. I'm okay, you're not too nerdy. Okay, not you're, too not, nerdy. you're not too nerdy. You're entirely too nerdy. Uh, <laughs> My question uh, is, have you guys seen Ben Affleck's new Batman suit? And if yes. you have, what do you think about this shit? Oh. Now, for, <laughs> those, for those who don't know, this new Bat... I'm the Beastly Gamer. And the new Batman suit looks pretty slick. It, they've removed all the technical aspects and, you know, uh, the armor suits of the Christian Bale and the Michael Keaton. It looks kind of like the old school, just tights. Batman with just the gray tights on his utility belt. And he looks like they've taken him back to the days of he's a, being a samurai. He doesn't need all this technology to kick ass. And Ben Affleck looks tough as hell. Looks like he could just knock somebody's head off. And, uh, of course, he's going to fight Superman in this. I, I got some ideas as to why I think they're going to be fighting. My idea in this movie is they're going to fight because in the original Man of Steel movie, Superman and Zod and Zod's underlings like killed hundreds of thousands of people destroying uh, Metropolis. Kill, yeah. you know, knocking down buildings and all this stuff. And so, if Bruce Wayne was, you know, across the country in Gotham City watching this, he would immediately see Superman as a terrorist. And I'm thinking he's going to go out there and, you know, rid the city of this menace. And so they're going to fight and finally, you know, realize that Superman's a good guy and he just fucked up. But what are you guys' thoughts on this new suit? <laughs> you guys go first. I got, there's so many pictures I want to show you guys. So you go first, Robbie. <laughs> Well, I remember I saw the article on IG, and I, I don't think I actually looked at it. I think I saw a brief picture of it, and it looks pretty cool. I mean, of course, there's all that backlash and that I think this cast is Batman. People are like, oh, my God, it's going to be so terrible. Why would you cast him? But they were saying the same thing about, um, what's his face? He Heath Ledger. Heath he he Ledger. Yeah, Heath yeah. Ledger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were saying, oh, my God, like, he's going to be so bad. Why would you cast him? And then he turned out to be an amazing Joker. So Best Joker ever. Yeah, I think Ben Affleck would be really good as Batman. He looks pretty cool in the picture, so I'm I'm pretty excited about it. And and that suit looks like it's it's actually a suit suit, like it's fabric. He looks really buff in it. And Ben Affleck has like an axe to grind, man. You know, he's heard all this outcry from people in the world saying that he's going to be a terrible fucking Batman. Ben Affleck, this guy is fucking. He's got a lot of weight on him right now. He's he really was... got to deliver. Can you? I, like... He was the fucking daredevil. Have you seen that movie? Uh, that movie spawned Electro. He should not be allowed to ever do the superhero movie again. Right? Have you guys like seen though the 
the what people have put or no? Like no, the, no. they said that he's the saddest looking Batman. He looks sad. He yeah. looks depressed in the picture. So a lot of people made a bunch of jokes Isn't and stuff like that off it. Depressed, and hold on, let me let me show you guys a picture first. What what mm -hmm. I'm talking about, which mm -hmm. is pretty damn funny. So if you look at the picture right now, this is a Ben Affleck picture. Yeah. Okay. So that's what it looks like right there. So that, as you see, like everyone, Ooh, it's pretty my cool. life sucks. Yeah, I mean, so <laughs> it's pretty cool. Me. It's just that. Now, I'm going to go to another picture real quick. They're saying that was a joker face behind him. Did you notice that? They're saying that he looks really sad. So that people had, like, a bunch of different pictures that they made, like, of the saddest moments that he's in the picture to see how well it fits into the picture. They made memes out of him? They, they made plenty of them. Here's one that one of my favorites. Like, if you guys have ever, you know, seen Full House or anything, you know there's plenty of sad moments in Full House. Well, you know, just to let you know, Ben Affleck and Batman is pretty sad in this picture. He was really sad. Something happened. I'm not sure if it happened to Bob Sack. It happened to someone. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. It's it's pretty sad. I'm not gonna lie. Um, as you can see in this picture right here, <laughs> that uh, yeah, as you can see right here, you know, it's it's a very sad moment. I'm not too sure what happened, but as you can see, uh, Jesse, Uncle Jesse, and uh, Michelle is a little upset. <laughs> um, it's a pretty sad picture. I don't know exactly what happened, but it's it's sad. It's tragic. I don't know what happened. I just want to let you guys know that picture. Um, it's it's you know, sad moments happen. Uh, there's there's other moments that and Batman's there to to be the shoulder to cry on. There's, there's another the moment right here. And I'll show you guys real quick. It's the last one right here. I mean, there's plenty more. It's just a sad moment, and uh, it's him and uh, Keanu Reeves on the bench. I don't know exactly why Keanu Reeves is there, but it's a sad moment. Um, together, they're just staring at the floor. As you see, um, yeah, it's very depressing. Batman looks sad. That. That's why right, that. my sister just like assaulted in my room there. I was like, Get out. <laughs> So, I, just, I just realized Batman's like three feet tall. <laughs> See, he's on that damn short. Yeah, I got one last one. <laughs> oh man, I couldn't find the one I wanted so like to show you guys, but yeah, that there's a lot of pictures like that. There's one of Batman pushing like a swing set alone. There's no one on the swing set. They have like his arm and they in a gif like pushing the swing set. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we needed to see the picture first. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Right? I can't find a picture anyway. Oh, man. Just get another one. <laughs> no. I'll look for it. If you guys keep talking, I'll see if I can what, find it. What are your thoughts on the. Uh, do you think this movie will be uh, able to compete? I know that the, ne the next Captain America 3 is scheduled to be released on the day that Batman and Superman come out. You think it's Seriously? A good idea? Yeah. They both come out the exact the exact same day. They're going head to head. Okay? You guys didn't know this? Yes. Well, well I'm the Beastly oh, Gamer, and I, I broke this news to the or world. You're the one and only Beastly. Well, thank you, sir. You're very welcome. You know, there ain't no other black dudes that act this white in the world. But I like white. I would <laughs> like to show you guys a picture here, if you don't mind. I'm going to show you guys a picture real quick. Just to uh, introduce you guys to this picture. I'm going to show you guys because I was scooting my sister out of the room. She was throwing stuff away from me. Get the hell out of here. I'm just trying to shoot her out. So... All right, well, that didn't work. All right, ready? Let's just uh, do the screen capture. I think this is a funny picture. This is, shows how sad he looks in this picture, okay? This is the last one right here. I promise, all right? Yep. yep. We're, we're enjoying him. I haven't seen any of these yet. As you can see, he's very, very depressed, very sad. So he should have <laughs> step by himself. Like, like, <laughs> um, I think anything works. Any, any sad image works perfectly. Like, to be honest, any sad image works perfectly. Um, yeah, as you can see, it's raining. You know, he's all alone. Um, he's, yeah. he's huge, though. I mean, Ben Affleck is he's really a big guy, and th th there's no weight on that swing. It should be flying over the top. <laughs> <laughs> he's just, like, pushing it softly. <laughs> no, people are creative, though. I like that. I like their style. They did a great job. Oh, that that picture of our Batman though. I think it would have worked a lot better if he was in his typical on top of the building looking down. Oh, yeah. the, fact, the fact that he's on the ground looking down, he does look incredibly depressed. Dude, but that picture, he looks so stiff in the picture. Like he looks stiff, like Jack. So he's so stiff. But but anyway, back to what you said with uh, it's gonna be the same day as Captain America three. To be honest with you, 
that picture helped it out a little bit, but I still think that there's so many people that are probably going to wait to see what mm -hmm. happens open weekend, like how well they people perceive it. Because if you're talking about day one, who's gonna, who, which movie you're gonna see the first night? I feel that people are gonna see Captain America yeah, three because the way the Captain America two ended set up for Captain America three. Well, well, for the people who did see Captain America two, the way it ended. Well, no, spoiler. I'm not, not, not going to spoil, trust right. me. Right. I just look like this, but I'm not really crazy. <laughs> the way it ended and the direction it's going doesn't seem as intriguing to me. Now, I didn't even know which direction they were going in the second movie, but now at the end of three, you know where they're going. You know what Captain America is going to do. And that, to me, isn't as interesting as seeing him fulfill that as it would be to see Batman Superman fight. So that's the only reason. Now, I mean... Depends, what? though, because here's the problem. Here's the dilemma. If you guys know anything about the comic book for okay, Captain America, don't say anything, but the point is, if this looks like it's going into the comic book, and there's something big that happens in the comic book with everyone, so that's why this is hyping up to be something big. There's something huge that's going to happen. We have to see if they're going to follow the comic book or they're not. And if they follow the comic book, there's something really big that happens. And, like, if they do that in part three, then it's going to be huge. And I think that would be an even bigger story than Batman Superman combined. Like, it's just a bigger story. Like, Captain America 2 shouldn't have been that big of a story. Like, it was setting up for Captain America 3. That's going to be really? a bigger story. Because okay. that, there's so much more story elements if they follow the comic book or not. See, I, I, I used to be an avid uh, comic book collector as a kid until I met some girl who was my, my dad's ex-wife's niece. She came to visit. I showed her my old comics. I had like a number four Avengers and Fantastic Four, all this good stuff, and she stole my whole suitcase. Suitcase, lying bitch. But um, <laughs> I, I haven't collected ever since then, and I'm sure you're talking about the guy whose name is abbreviated as BB. Something happens in the comics with him. We're going to talk about this post-show. I need to be up to date here, not too nerdy. Well, the thing is this, uh, you, you remember you talked about that the trailer or something spoiled the movie for you or something spoiled, didn't you say something spoiled the movie for Captain America 2 for you? Uh, I no. could have sworn you said, uh, I thought you said something spoiled it for you, like someone spoiled no, no, it no, ahead of time. Some, someone did spoil it. I was watching but, the trailer. But that wasn't a spoiler. That wasn't even close to being a spoiler. That's what I was trying to say. That was meant, everyone should have known that going in. If you didn't, the trailer said it. That's why I, I think I was trying to tell you. But that aspect, there's something even bigger that people know is supposed to happen in the comic books. So, I mean, if you want to know, I'll let you know after the show. I definitely want to know. I'll let you know once the show's over. Kind of want to announce it out to people. Oh that, yeah, yeah, yeah. We you know. we understand. We get it. But yeah, I mean, that's why I think that that's a guarantee day one. Like that's guarantee you know they're gonna do well. Marvel has not let you down yet. And just when you thought it was gonna go downhill, Captain America two was huge. Yeah, yeah I mean. Well, the original Captain America I did not like. And so I went into this movie. I was like, oh, I didn't make another Captain Because, look, when the original Captain America movie came out, he seemed underpowered compared to the, the rest of the people who were in the Avengers. The Iron Man movie, he has all these powers. Thor, even though even though he was lame, he had all these powers. You know, you got the Hulk doing the, of course, Bruce Banner changes every movie. But the Hulk is real powerful and doing all this fantastic stuff. And then you got Captain America who seemed just kind of re like a regular guy. And then I was expecting more of that. Until they started coming out with the review saying this is like the best Marvel standalone movie, blah, blah, blah. I'm looking around like, hey, we got to go see this. And then I went and saw it. I was like, geez, now I can kind of understand why he's in the role he's in with the Avengers. He's kind of the one that they go to for moralistic compass to do the right thing, to stand up for truth, justice in the American way. I'm the BC Gamer. Please continue, not to nerdy. <laughs> uh, but that, that's pretty much it. You, like, you just said everything. I was like... To me, like, it was a really good movie. I was shocked about that. But the movie I'm really excited about isn't really Captain America, the third one, whatever it's going to be. How to Train Your Dragon 2? No, X-Men. <laughs> Days of Future Past. Come on. That, that's the one. You know it's How to Train Your Dragon 2. Yeah. No. No, you're close. I can't we wait for that movie. Yeah. You might both know an arch and nerdy. It is not How to Train Your Dragon 2. Nah, not even close, man. I'll tell you right now. Yeah. Hugh Jackman also announced that he said he'll that do it again. Yeah, he'll he do it wants again. to do it again. And that, to me, right there, was like, yes. Because, to me, he's Wolverine. I don't care what you do, he's Wolverine, to me. Like, there's no one else to replace him. Just like I think it's too unfortunate, but Iron Man can't be replaced either. Robert Downey Jr. pretty much stole that, that part. There's no one else who can fit that role. 
You know, and yeah, I think it, was, it feels like it was made for him. But what Hugh Jackman said was, with the writing of this story and the way it was implemented, it was done so well, he felt like it was an absolutely fresh, brand new thing again. Yeah. And he didn't feel, you know, burdened by his previous installments as the Wolverine. He felt like it was something so fresh and new that he doesn't mind. He actually wants to go forward and do this again, which is great for us because, you know, with, with um, First Class, when that movie came out, to me, that was so fresh and so different from what we'd seen before, especially with X-Men 3, which really just broke their hearts. And then Wolverine was crap. But uh, when, when uh, X-Men First Class came out, it was so different. It was a new look at it, a fresh take. It breathed new life into the X-Men franchise. Now, this one here really looks like they're breathing a ton of new life into it. And luckily for us, Wolverine, he gets to go back in time and, 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 and set up this movie and the fact that he's one of the main characters in it, and I'm, I'm sure that Mystique is as well. He is someone drumming here. He uh, uh he uh. Yeah, someone is drumming. He's really excited about it, and I'm super excited about it. What's the release date of that, Nacho Nerdy? That's soon, isn't it? A couple like, what? Well, I don't even remember the date now. Oh my god, I had it written down. <laughs> oh my god. You see? Yeah, did, you, did you see Nacho Nerdy's eyes looking around? He was really looking for it. Yeah, I really <laughs> Hold on real quick. Yeah, I'm excited to see that too. Kate and I will go check it out. Take the kids. I uh, May 23rd. Oh my gosh, I'm like, it's, oh, a, okay. it's soon. It's this Friday. Like I'm like forgetting over here. It's like I'm thinking yeah, the exact okay. date. I knew it was Friday. I wasn't sure if this week or next week. I would have found out eventually, but it's this week. <laughs> this Friday. Okay, so this this will be the last day of school here in Georgia for the kids. Yes, guys, now my, my life is totally swamped with children. I don't, get, I don't get any break. But, yeah, we'll go see that next Friday. I'm super excited to see it. They haven't been letting this down. Marvel's been doing a damn good job. You know, this is uh, this is separated from Marvel, unfortunately. But really? Yeah, they're, they're not part of Marvel. They're, uh, they're WB. Wait, not WB. They're uh, Fox. What? Fox, Fox owns X-Men. That's why you can't say. That's why um you can't say mutants. You can't say the word mutant, or whatever. Like they own that, so that's why you can't do. And then Sony owns Spider Man, and then Marvel owns everything else. I mean, I thought Sony Studios just owned Spider Man for right now. They actually own Spider Man. They own Spider Man, and that's why people were yeah. upset with the movie because they felt that. People were rooting for Sony to not do well, so then Sony will drop the Spider name, so Spider Man could go back with Avengers could go to Marvel. That's why Marvel doesn't have Spider-Man in there. Holy shit. So when uh, when Marvel uh, was dissolved, all these individual franchises went to different places? Yeah, that's why Marvel can't... If you look at the movies, right? Marvel yeah. can't say the word mutant. They can't say the mutant at all. Mutant is owned by Fox. So that's why they can't say that word. So all, only the X-Men movies are allowed to use the word mutant. That's why the X-Men movie is going to have Quicksilver. But also, the reason why... The, the next adventure is going to have Quicksilver. The reason why they were able to have Quicksilver, they have their own version of Quicksilver, is because they're not calling him a mutant or anything. Wow, I and he, no and he looks And he looks different from, they can't be the same exact looking Quicksilver, so they're both going to look different. Yeah, I hear that the Quicksilver in this X-Men movie, like, steals the damn show. He's, he, they said he steals the show. He doesn't have too many scenes, but, he, like, they said they're going to improve on that for the next one. Remember, they're, they're filming two back-to-back, -back, so they film two back-to-back. So they're going to prove add more scenes to that yeah. one. So not only are they, are they uh, doing Days of Future Past, they're doing the next one right now too? Yeah, that's why everyone said it's going to be a Apocalypse. So it's going to have, you know, it's going to be the whole Apocalypse, X-Men oh Apocalypse. Oh, my goodness. That's why it's so exciting. That's what Days of Future Past in the comic book it actually happened like that, except uh, Kitty, like, she's the one that went back. She's the one that went back, and she, you know, all, like she had to fix the time because everything was changed and the future was dark and everything in the in the future people die, so we don't know how who's gonna die if it's gonna be seeing the people in comic books or whatever happens. But people die, so she has to go back in time to alternate the, the future. Because of that, because of what they do when they go back, they alternate something else and now uncons apocalypse. Because of what they changed in the past, wow. that's what led into this. So like they're actually already announced that movie. It's already like that. So now we can look forward to, like, another movie, like, boom. And, a, and Apocalypse is the very first mutant that has all this ridiculous power. Are you talk, you're talking about the actual Apocalypse Apocalypse or the end of the world Apocalypse? No, Apocalypse Apocalypse. That's what I'm saying. Like, you're, this is what this is setting up. This is setting up for, like, the biggest power that 
either one of the mutants have to face. That's why all of them have to work together because they all will be extinct without this. And this is what, like, even if you looked at, if you didn't know the comic books, if you saw the cartoon series, that's when it got good. When, yeah. they, when Apocalypse arrived and, like, they're all going against them because now it's like all the, the normal X-Men are going against all these mutant X-Men from Apocalypse's side and, like, it's completely different. They all had, like, similar powers to sort the of X-Men on Earth. So it, it's all crazy stuff. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, and this movie has the Sentinels in it, finally. The so it, same time. it has everything that people have been waiting for. So I'm excited. <laughs> and, and, and when we do our question at the end of the show, which probably will be pretty soon. Yeah, we'll probably get to that question soon. Uh, it's gonna, I, I, got a, I got a question about this uh, X-Men, Avengers, Spider-Man situation. Yeah, we'll do that. that. You're talking about like a question, like a scenario? Yeah, yeah scenario. All right, okay. like, go for it. Let's, okay. I think we're ready for it. Why not? So Fox owns the X-Men. Disney owns uh, the Avengers. Well, yeah, well, like, Disney owns Marvel, all, mm-hmm. uh, everything else. So left every, everything else, and, and Sony owns Spider-Man. If you yeah. had to pick one of these franchises to watch, and you could see all the future iterations of those films, which one would you pick and why? Robbie, you want to go first? Of course. I'll go first if you want. Uh, yeah, I'm going to think about it for a bit. You all right, sure. First. I'll go with Fox. The only reason Fox, I, because they have X-Men. X-Men has so many characters in that world. X-Men alone has so many of the Marvel characters that you could stick with X-Men and be safe. There's so many people on X-Men. They're mutants and so many different powers. That, I don't care any X-Men. Yeah. Hey, like, literally anyone else. Like, say you're, like, a fan of Hulk or anything like that. Those powers... People within the X Men universe alone has powers like the Hulk and everyone else. So you could sit there with people that have all these powers that are related to any other character Marvel has. So you really don't need anything else but Fox. Even though, and plus, I think Fox is, did a decent job, not a great job. They did a decent job, and supposedly they're doing better now with this new movie. And I still kind of like First Class. So First Class, I think, was pretty decently done. So, and supposedly this movie is supposed to be really good. So I think Fox could do a good enough job in that world, just sticking with that world. So that's well, my answer. I, IGN has a review of this movie up too, so you should definitely check that out. All right, Robbie, what do you think? Um, I think I am a pretty big Spider-Man fan. Like I like Spider-Man movies and all. I think I'd, I guess I'd go with Sony for that reason, just because I'm I like Spider-Man a lot. I gotta be honest, I wasn't a huge fan of the Avengers. I just thought it was meh. I don't know, maybe I'm the only one that thinks that, but like everyone was saying how amazing it was. I was like, it's just okay. I don't know. It wasn't that fantastic. Oh, wow. you, you remember that scene where the hawk grabbed uh, Loki? And, and yeah, Loki that was pretty awesome, though. No, I loved that. I Absolutely. am a god. Bang me. <laughs> <laughs> I think just personally, I like Spider Man the most. I've always liked Spider Man and Batman a lot. And X Men, I've never been huge on. I don't know. I like the X Men movies. They're. Decent, but I think Spider Man's my favorite, so I'd go with Sony on that. Okay, right, cool. Before I answer my question, how long has um, Fox owned the X Men franchise, not to nerdy? Since the start of uh, X Men. Really? This deal was back, been back since then. the start. Same thing with Sony, with the start of the original uh, Spider Man. Well, Tobey Maguire. I had no idea. I, I'm just learning this today. That's why like, people thought that's the only reason why everyone said they rebooted Spider Man, because the contract was almost up. So in order, if you reboot it, then you can start the contract again. It'll continue. If they didn't do anything with Spider-Man, would it drop? So that's why they extended it by making the movies. So they can do this uh, theoretically forever. And they on. could if they want to. Like that's, I, I think eventually the contract has to be up. But I think as long as they keep making the movies, it's gonna, they're gonna keep the name Spider-Man. Oh, they well. own Spider-Man. Well, okay. Well, my my answer for this question, guys, is this. I would probably go with Disney, and the reason being, of course, Spider-Man will be out, the X-Men might be out, but many of the people in the X-Men have had their own standalone comics that exist in the Marvel Universe. So just like the X-Men are able to pull different X-Men from different periods of time and do movies with Uncanny and just the original X-Men and X-Men, everybody's been in the X-Men, but a lot of these characters have also had their own standalone comics. Disney would still have the right to a lot of the X-Men as well. Because I know Cyclops has had his own comics. Storm's had her own comics. All these people have. And so you could use them still with Disney. With out, of, out of context of them actually being the X-Men, I would think that would be theoretically possible, right? Yeah. Wait, wait. Rephrase that question again. What, what do you say again? Like, 
Can you ask that question again? Yeah, uh, I was saying that's theoretically possible since they, they've had their own, since a majority of the X-Men have had their own standalone comics. Like the Wolverines had his own comics, yeah. Storms had her own comics, Cyclops had his own comics, uh, Colossus, everybody's had their own comic books. Wouldn't those comics be standalone and not be actually X-Men? No. And, they wouldn't. They, they're all. They're all like. And you better believe that if Wolverine was ever taken away from Fox, Fox will sue the crap. They can't have any variation of it. The only reason why they're able to get away with Quicksilver, Quicksilver, Quicksilver was a Quicksilver was uh, X Men, and then uh, because Magneto's son or adopted son or whatever, and then he transferred to the Avengers. So that's the only reason why he was able to go to Marvel. So, but Marvel could not do in the contract or whatever. He was; they were not allowed to do anything similar to their Quicksilver. They have to be two yeah. different, separate Quicksilvers, and they can't call him a mutant at all in there. They're gonna say they they have powers or different. I forgot how it worked, but they can't could not say it because I think that's what we saw at the end of the Captain America. At the end credits, you saw the two mute, the two non mutants. They didn't say mutants. They saw the sister, which is Scarlet mm -hmm. Witch. And the brother, which is Quicksilver. That was Quicksilver. Yeah. That was their version of Quicksilver. And then now you see in the trailers the, the X-Men's version of Quicksilver. Completely different. So that's how it works. You can't use any character. Like You can't make sure you can't use any character. So, so I mean, I guess Disney would theoretically still have more characters, but probably yeah. not the best characters. Damn. And, and all, yeah. Sony, all Sony has is Spider-Man and Spider-Man's villains. So the fact is, they could probably still they could build new things around these characters. See, ah, see, I, might, the, I might have to go with a Fox on this one, man. I here's the be... problem. Here's the problem. Ready? I think the the biggest problem is this. Everyone knows this. Like, the best heroes are Marvel. The best villains are DC. I, I think that's hands down the way it's always been. DC always has the best villains. They always had the best villains. You got like the Joker. You got really like you got. Yeah, so many people, and then you look, that's just the Batman universe. Then you got, like, Lex Luthor. You got so many people that are iconic bad guys. And then Marvel always had the best heroes, right? Now, the problem with the Marvel is, or with Disney, is that the best villains, I think, are on either Spider-Man or within the X-Men universe. I think they have the best villains in total. Like, the best villains and best evil people are in those universes, which they can't really pull from. I, in my opinion, I think that's the best, the best villain. So like that, that leads to some problems when you're making a movie, you know. Because if you really think about it, Loki, wasn't a true villain, but they turned yeah. him into a good villain. Mm -hmm. That you know, I mean, they, like he wasn't a true, like he was a villain, but he wasn't, he wasn't like a evil. Really, he was, yeah, he, he was. He didn't feel it in his heart to be. And evil. they made him into a really good villain into the Avengers and stuff like that. They made him a focal point. Like, like who else are they gonna do that for? With? That's can't the question. It, can't you know? do it with too many people. Yeah. So um, I don't know. That's that's the question I have. Like when when are you gonna get more villains and stuff on there? But besides that, the heroes are so awesome. I mean, we're all, we're nitpicking again, man. We're having fun. We're all nerds here. Hey, man, this is this is a, a commentary show. I mean, this is what we do on Beastly Thoughts. We we share our thoughts and ideas and and hopefully uh, get some back from our, our audience and our subscribers and viewers. We did ramble on a little bit, guys, but this is what we do here. I don't have anything else if you guys want to uh, close. Nah, that's pretty much it. I mean, I guess we just go around saying uh, what everyone's doing next week and call the show. So okay. Wanna... Uh, I'll, I'll go. Yeah, I'll say whoever it's wants to start. Because it's really starting to cut out for me. This is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> See how sad he looks, too? Oh, oh. oh, my God, it's closing up. Uh, is there, like, a, a counter on your computer screen, 10, 9, 8? <laughs> Let us know when it gets to two, okay? Um, what am I going to be doing this week? I, I think I'm going to be playing a little bit of Call of Duty, of course. I want to play some Battlefield because I had a great time playing with you guys two weeks ago. That was a new experience for me. I had never like a played. Robot right now. I can't make out anything. So I, I, I heard you fine. Just just hold off for one second. Um, I never played Battlefield on the you know the wide open huge levels that we played on, and I thought that was pretty fun. Um, I'm going to be playing some old school KOTOR Knights of the Old Republic. If you guys know about Knights of the Old Republic, show show me some love by hitting that thumbs up button on Not Too Nerdy's video because Knights of the Old Republic is one of the best games ever on the original Xbox, baby. I'm going to be playing some Smash Brothers on my GameCube. And uh, pretty much any other games that come my way, man, I'm going to be getting at them. What about you, Robbie? What are you going to be playing this week? 
I'll definitely be playing more Call of Duty Ghosts, probably with some friends, and be playing solo too, doing a little sound horn, and then I'm just going to play whatever I can to tie myself over until Watch Dogs. Like, I absolutely can't wait for that next week, mm-hmm. and then hopefully that'll tie me over until E3 and all the big announcements and everything, and then we'll see what happens after that until the fall. So I'm basically just tied myself over until Watch Dogs for this week. I think so. I think everybody's going to be playing that game. I can't oh, wait. Man. Can't wait, yeah. Not too nerdy. What you gonna be playing this week? All right, I'm gonna do stick it to the man. I might as well try that out. Just like a quick video, a little let's play of that. And then uh, Wolfenstein. Yeah, a little Wolfenstein yeah, going there. New order. Yes, sir. Get that. Um, it's a little feedback there, but anyway, I also want to play. Oh, there's a bunch of different games that I want to play. You know, obviously Watch Dogs. What day is Watch Dogs come out again, everyone? The 27th. Yeah, it's the 27th. So we still got another. You know, we still got another. It's Friday, right? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't it's know. The 27th. That's Tuesday. Not this Tuesday, no, but next, next Tuesday. Tuesday. It's still got a full so. week till we got that. And uh, so, yeah, so Wolfenstein's yeah. why we focus on. I also want to show you guys, I'm going to start bringing back retro game pickups. I used to do that a while ago, and I stopped doing it, and now I'm back at it. And oh. today, today mm-hmm. I got my mojo flowing. I got it going. I got the best games I could possibly get. So, tell them, tell them. I can't game. tell them now. If you want to find out what games I got, stay tuned for next week. But I got some good pickups in this one uh, house. Hopefully they don't watch the video because they really gave me a steal again. Yes, but, you uh, did get a fucking steal. I mean, I'm going to show that and stuff like that, so stay tuned for that. I want to bring that back because I'm really into retro collecting, and I, I always watch the Game Chasers and Grimsley42. Like, I watch all these people. <laughs> and how they collect games, and I've been doing this for years, you know, so I never filmed it, and now I'm going to start getting back into it, so oh that's pretty much God. it. God, you guys watch that, because I, he already told me in the post show what he, what he came up on. This guy came across a gold mine. He's the man. He's the gamer <laughs> all day long. That's very really awesome. You guys, be sure to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe if you haven't done it yet. I'm the BC Gamer, and this is Not Too Nerdy, and this is Robbie. All right, have a good one. We're out. See you guys. Bye. Yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Bye.